Hello and welcome to the sixth round of the Virtual V8 Supercar Championship presented by the Touring Pro Series and sponsored by GamePod and Inside Sim Racing. Uh, my name is Danny Asbury and I will be joined here today by John Munro. So, John, how goes it? Uh, doing very well at the moment, Danny. Thank you very much. We're here at Montreal, of course, um, in tandem with the Formula One weekend. Uh, so it's the second race outside of Australia this season, or the second round, I should say. Uh, and it is one race to date of uh, 47 laps, I believe. So it, we're in for an absolute cracker today, Danny. Yeah, this is uh, the second stop of our North American tour uh, within the series. Obviously, last round we were at Watkins Glen. Uh, now we move uh, uh, north of the border to Canada. Or, uh, or, and so uh, this is, this, like I said, the sixth round of the championship. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot at play here in, 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 the, in the championship itself, uh, John. And let me actually just pull up uh, the standings for you guys so uh, you can take a look at everything. Uh, you know, that's pre-quality. Here we go. This is the championship standings. As you're seeing, uh, Jeffrey Rietfeld is currently the leader. But, John, there's actually some uh, news about uh, a penalty that was issued against Rietfeld uh, in light of some of uh, his actions at Watkins Glen. Could you take us through that? Yeah, definitely. It looked like in the first 20 laps of the, the race at Watkins Glen, he was um, cutting the track a little bit in the chicane, which is, of course, easy to do. But um, And he did, he did stop doing it eventually, but that cost him 10 points. Uh, or um, yeah, 10 points, which is actually a, a lot uh, considering how close the championship is. And it means his gap to Tolberg at the top of the standings is down to eight points. So, you know, it really does spice things up a little bit. And Jeffrey will be a bit gutted about that um, after, you know, he, he drove a great race to win. It's just, you know, you, you just need to avoid these this, these cuts. You need to stay on, on track boundaries. And, uh, yeah, you have to say the penalty, penalty was given, uh, rightly so. And it really has tight, tightened up the championship at the top. Yeah, I mean, it was a critical penalty because it's, it's the equivalent of, uh, uh, obviously, Rethel won the race at, at Watkins Glen. This is the equivalent of him now finishing six. And obviously, with Talbert, I believe, finishing on podium, uh, or no, finishing fourth, was it? Uh, that's going to, he actually lost points to Talbert uh, coming out, out of that round. So now this really shakes things up. Uh, uh, Simon Keelock there in third with uh, 261 points. The thing is, is about Keelock, very critical to the championship, that he's not going to be with us today, John. So uh, Precision lose one of their star drivers, which means they have a lot of work to do. It kind of puts some level with THR now uh, with only one driver going. Obviously, Toby Davis, the THR uh, orange pilot, is also not going to be here. So uh, those guys are, are now going to be uh, just one-on-one -on -one pretty much. Uh, one, one Precision driver, one THR driver for their top teams. Uh, anyhow, looking at the team championship itself, there on the right, you're seeing Precision Motorsports with uh, 571 points, uh, followed by THR uh, Orange in four, 542. So about, uh, what is that, 29 points uh, off is THR Orange, THR right around out the podium. And then we're seeing some teams like Core Racing Prime and Ice Cold Racing, which have been uh, surprises in the championship, wouldn't you say, John? Yeah, definitely. The um, core, especially, have have really um, shot the fox. They've come into this series, you know, which is one of the most competitive series in the V8 in the uh, Touring Pro Series, should I say? And uh, definitely a difficult series to be anywhere near the top. And to see a you know core who may be struggling in other series to get right up there, uh, sitting in fourth place, oh, actually only 24 points behind THR Red. Um, so for Core Racing Prime, so that's absolutely fantastic to see, and also Ice Cold doing a good job as well. They were yeah, they were also being strong in minis. So yeah, there's a couple of young teams really are pushing to break into that you know into that top group alongside THR and Precision, who as we say are both missing drivers tonight. Yeah, so obviously the team championship is very competitive this this season. So now let's actually take you down uh, to the action on track. About seven minutes to go in warm up here as we're sitting on uh, Matthew Orban. Let's actually go. Uh, over to see who's at the top. It's actually going to be Jeffrey Rietfeld, uh, who is leading the times at the moment. And uh, John, I mean, we noticed this uh, through the week of testing it. Uh, Jeffrey Rietfeld has been on another planet. He's so far, I think, the only driver to hit a 163, a uh, 136, rather. Uh, obviously, that's on quality fuel, but no other drivers in the 136s. Uh, right now, we're seeing Eunice Ravi on second, about four tenths off of Rietfeld's time of a 137. Point one. So it, it seems like, again, Precision are uh, the, te the dominant team on these uh, hard control tires, John. Yeah, definitely. It just um, Jeffrey's been so fast all through the week. And I mean, the times in practice are proving it, although Tolberg has, just as I say that, improved to a 37.366. So you've got the top two in the championship, one Precision, one THR, first and second at the field at the moment with Jeffrey Rietveld, um, two tenths, just over two tenths ahead of the man you're looking at now, Jesper Tolberg. So, I mean, the times are still close, but it does look like Jeffrey really has, you know, got to grips with the track and as he has all season. I mean, just looking at his results through the season, he's been remarkably, you know, consistent. He won the race at Albert Park. He had two second um, 
sorry, that's not the that's not the Bates. Then he had a fourth position at the first race at Barbagallo, then a fifth position, so that's another top five. He then won at Simmons Plains and got a fourth position after crashing out from the lead. Uh, another fourth at Adelaide, and then a win last time out at Watkins Glen, although the point penalty, um, you know, maybe took away from that a little bit. But yeah, he's just been remarkably consistent. Every single race, he's finished in that top five, often winning. And um, it just shows in the standings, and also you can see it in practice. He, it just shows you why he's the man that's leading the way at the moment. And he, I have to say, at this current moment, it looks like he's the favourite to take the championship. But you can, of course, never count out the man you're looking at, Jesper Tolberg. Yeah, I mean, with with, with Rietveld, he's he's won both of the races once we've uh, switched to this hard control tire, and I mean, he's obviously got the, the setup mastered with these tires. Meanwhile, with the sprint tire, we seem it seems like T it comes back to THR a little bit, but. Uh, regardless, we are back on that control tire today, so again, it looks like advantage reap felt and precision. But we're looking at some of the other drivers here, like down here in third place, Eunice Ravio had a tremendous result at Watkins Glen, finished second, and was actually uh, uh, pushing a, a reap felt for for majority of that race. Uh, it seems like uh, uh, Ravio has become now the fastest THR driver, one of the fastest drivers. Obviously, we're seeing Tallberg really quick. Uh, Adrian Holm, this guy right here. Uh, for for LMR, uh, uh, rather uh, lazy man racing, uh, is now in fourth place uh, here on our pre practice about four minutes ago until a quality. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, John, what 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 can you really make of a home season? I think he's sitting. What is it? Tenth uh, in this championship standings. I mean, we've seen him take a pole position, and other times he's been lackluster. So, uh, what do you think of, of home championship so far? It's been really difficult to judge, to be honest, Danny. Of course, starting with ice cold, and um, he he's shown some great pace, you know, and, and he just he has these all, all flashes where he's just fantastic, and he's managing to drag the car around in unbelievable times, like you're seeing here today, fourth place in this kind of quality of driving standard. But yeah, he's just he just seems to not quite nail the consistency. He had a couple of um, horror shows, it has to be said, throughout the season, so it's not been perfect for him. But looking at his results, he had a fourth place at Albert Park to get it kicked off. He really struggled at Barbara Gallo. Best position he got there was ninth. Uh, Simmons Plains 23rd and 25th which is just awful uh, and then Adelaide P8 and Watkins Glen P7 so he seems to have picked up a little bit and it, it is, it's been fast but inconsistent and it looks like he's shifted teams and um, so it's good to see some of some of the drivers you know moving around a bit and experimenting with new things but I mean he's, his pace has impressed me this season and if he can get the consistency nailed we'll see him a more, maybe more of a regular up there fighting for top fives and maybe even podiums. Yeah, I mean, it seems like this, uh, his home has really turned around after his 2012 season, which again was kind of lackluster. But here we're seeing Tommy O'Halla there in fifth place, just signed with THR. So O'Halla with a new outfit seems to really have taken initiative this week. And then the guy there in sixth place so far in our, our pre-practice, Matt Richards for Aerospeed uh, uh, Motorsport. I mean, uh, this guy, Matt, he's had trouble just staying within Division One, and now we're seeing him coming coming uh, with some real pace. He's only a second behind Rietveld's time there. Uh, and so, I mean, Matt, I mean, with Aerostream, they seem, uh, this this outfit in general, Aerostream, seem to really be picking it up within TPS. So it's great to see them with a the driver there uh, uh, so far, so deep inside the top ten. Matt Orban there in seventh. Uh, Matt, you know, I talked to him before the race started, John, and he, or rather, before, before uh, yesterday, rather, I mean, and he said that he's not too confident about this track here in uh, Montreal, but he, he, he's come to grips with this car and just hopes that he can uh, have a nice consistent race today. But, I mean, despite saying that, his, his pace is very good with a 138.2 that he's going to be very happy with that. Kevin Brent's there in eighth place. Uh, in the, uh, I think Kevin actually, John, is fifth place in the championship standing. So, again, uh, Kevin is looking very good. Uh, we have Chris Butcher there in ninth. Chris, remember, he was Division Two until last round where he got a shot Division One, Had some trouble, but uh, seems to be uh, doing much better this round. Uh, we're seeing there Eric Strawn in tenth. That rounds out our top ten. Uh, so, so, I mean... Uh, with about a minute and a half uh, to go here before we get into the live quality, John, I mean, who's your pick to win, uh, to take pole position? I guess it would be Rifa, but are there any other surprise drivers we should be looking at here today? Um, I think, well, surprise is obviously, you know, something that you're not going to expect to happen. So, I mean, we, hopefully or we, we may be able to see some of that. Uh, today, whether it's qualifying or the race, but yeah, I'm afraid you just can't bet against Jeffrey Rootfeld. It's actually, I'm just noticing, Matt Richards improves to fifth position on a 37.9, and I was actually speaking to him uh, earlier, and he, you know, he's really he's really feeling good about this race. He didn't say much more than that, but he, you know, he likes the track, he's, he's feeling confident, and to be fifth in Division 1, looking at the competition, you know, you've got the likes of Chris Butcher, Eric Strand, you know, all the core guys, Kevin Brent and Matty Orban, 
Uh, some of these guys have been, you know, really fast, consistently up there in great positions. And for Matt Richards, you know, to drag that Airstream car up to fifth position, it's absolutely fantastic to see. I mean, you can you can tell the Airstream are really coming on as a team because of the the amount of time, you know, they've been getting mentioned on all these broadcasts. I keep noticing them, you know, popping up. And Matt Richards, really a young driver, he's improving massively. Um, so yeah, really good for them. Uh, I've actually speaking to some of the drivers for Quali, so they got some things to mention about the track. Um, Ice Cold are happy with their setup, but they're saying the car's not really designed for the track, or should I say the track's not designed for the car. And um, so, you know, some people are struggling a little bit. You've got the, the hairpin's the main overtaking opportunity, but we'll take you through a, a lap of the track uh, in qualifying. Uh, and also, it's difficult to pass into the chicane because there's only one ideal line through there, and if you're on the inside, you're going to lose so much speed. Uh, it's going to be really difficult to pass into there. But um, yeah, we're definitely going to see a great race today. Yeah, and now we are done with uh, pre-practice. We're about to go into quali. And uh, just a reminder to our viewers, you can always hit us up on the Touring Pro Series uh, broadcast chat page. Just remember to go to the Touring Pro Series uh, website and uh, I hit, hit the chat. And you can chat live with other viewers of our, our, our broadcast here. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break before we get started into uh, the, 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 the quali here. So just uh, sit back. We will be back with you in just a moment. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim Racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. All right, welcome back here. We're just going to take it down to uh, Quali here. We're dri driving on board with Jeffrey Reedford. Obviously, this is his still in his warm-up lap. Hasn't actually got across the stripe here to start his time here at, at Montreal. And uh, just a quick mention about GamePot. Obviously, GamePot, they are our sponsors here at the Touring Pro Series. Have been, uh, has been this way since 2012, where they initially joined the series uh, for virtual V8 Supercars. They have stuck with us, Ash from GamePot, those guys. They've been absolutely great. I mean, they've also sponsored two other uh, series, the Virtual Mini Challenge and Tom Onsicle Clio Series. Uh, so those guys hey, have been great for the championship, giving us a fair bit of recognition and uh, prestige even to have such a prestigious sponsor on board here with the Touring Pro Series. And uh, it makes guys like the, the guy we're watching right here, Jeffrey Rietfeld, push a little bit harder because he knows if he wins this championship, he gets a nice GamePod GT2 uh, racing rig. Uh, so, so I mean, it, it just attracts the, the, the top of the line drivers. Obviously, Rietfeld, one of the best drivers on our factor. So it's great when we can see the top drivers have some fuel to go after some of the top prizes in sim racing. And again, no uh, entry fee whatsoever to join this league. It's completely free. So if you're looking for a nice economical way to get into a top class sim racing league, look no further than the Touring Pro Series sponsored by GamePod.co.uk. So anyhow, there is, we're, we're obviously tracking Reef, but he just got through Sector 1, going through Sector 2. Now, I mean, John, describe this track here. It's a, it's a lot of chicanes here, a lot of a uh, 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 hot, heavy braking uh, zones here. So, I mean, uh, uh, talk us through uh, what, what you, what, how this track flows and what you need to, uh, to make a fast lap here. Yeah, I think I think this track, um, it's all about you know compromise. You've got the the high high speed long straights, but you really do need you know um, low down force if you like to get the top speed up. Uh, and you need a good setup in terms of gearing, but you're also going to need quite a bit of downforce um, for the hairpin and especially the chicanes, where that makes a big difference to time. Uh, the last sector in this track, when I was speaking to the drivers, they think that's the most important for time, and this chicane you're watching here is the most important of, of all, as Jeffrey Reitveld gets so close to the wall of champions, which I'm sure we'll see a couple of drivers hitting, as you see the guy behind <laughs> hitting it. But Jeffrey's going to come across the line now. Let's see what his benchmark time is. And he's done a 137.2, and that's a very respectable time 
uh, for a first lap, and that's actually still quicker than anyone else managed in the practice session. So Reet Belt's put in a fantastic banker lap. Tolber goes second on a 37.7 and is beaten by Ravio on a 37.6. So drivers' laps coming in th thick and fast at the minute. Matt Richards has gone seventh, so that's a poor first lap from him. But um, of course, they've got 11 minutes to improve with this qualifying format, different to some other series like the Clio's. Um, you get an unlimited amount of laps in the time you were given. But yeah, just just I wanted to you know game pod. It really is. Touring Pro Series and GamePod, their association is, is almost like a, a role model to other sim racing leagues. You know, they want to follow in the footsteps of Touring Pro Series and GamePod. And it's great to see that, you know, these two these two um, companies, if you like, have, have um, you know, got together to give such a good opportunity to all these young drivers, uh, well, young and old drivers. Um, so it's, it's great to see. And it really is, you know, this is the leading league in uh, sim racing. And the fact that it's free is just mind-boggling. So, yeah, definitely, as Danny was saying, if you're interested in sim racing and you think you have what it takes... Um, and even if you think you're not, you know, one of you, you, even if you think you can't beat Jeffrey Rootveld, we've of course got a Division Two as well. If you, um, if you, you know, you're not quite quick enough to make it to Division One, so there's great racing all across the field. Yeah, and now we're running on board with Matty Orban in fifth position right now, but only on a, a, a 139.8, so definitely not a, a, that quick of a time for uh, Mr. Orban. I, I'm noticing some of the drivers are pretty slow to, to begin this quality session. Obviously, only four drivers are in the 137s at this point. Uh, meanwhile, we're seeing then the guys like Kevin Brent here dropped in six with a again a 138.9. So these guys have to pick it up if they want to do uh, if they definitely want a, a, a good uh, finishing. A great start, a starting position in this race with only 10 minutes on the board. These guys have to start picking it up. Obviously, maybe these times we're seeing the first five minutes of this quality session are banker laps. Guys just making sure they got something on the board. Uh, Darren Adams there in eighth place for core racing. Uh, riding down the grid, it looks I, there's Eric, Eric Strawn, a nice Kevin Enderman, 10th. I mean, I talked to Kevin. He said he was really not confident in this pace whatsoever. Uh, going into this race today, but 10th position, obviously he's going to need to improve his time to keep that spot, but to shoot up to 10th, that's uh, very good uh, regardless. Uh, I'm noticing Matt Richards there right behind him has not found the pace he found um, uh, through 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 pre-practice there, so he's going to pick it up himself a little bit. There's Andy Johns there, who's falling off the track a little bit, he's going to return to the pits. Uh, let's see what's going on down the, the, the grid. Uh, 21st, we have Jonathan Oakerson, the last of the drivers, two set a time. So uh, those guys, some of the guys, Chris Butcher, Ethan Bass, they're going to have to get cracking sooner or later if they want to put a time in. Not really sure why you would wait with, uh, in, in virtual vehicle. Obviously, like you were saying, John, unlimited laps. So uh, at, at the front, we still have Reedfeld, I believe, is on pole position there. So uh, Adrian Holman, second place, jumps Eunice Ravio. So... It seems like again, John, it's it's refill on a plane, and these other drivers are struggling uh, to, to to catch up to him. Yeah, he just seems absolutely on fire. I mean, you know, as he as he has um, for most of the season, there's been certain races where he's just dominated, and this at the moment, the way it's looking, um, looks like it's going to be one. But he's about to start a lap, so why don't we? show on board with Jeffrey Rootveld and I'll talk you through a lap of Montreal as we head now we've just gone through the chicane with the wall of champions very iconic and now heading towards turn one you've got a heavy braking zone into a very slow left and then a right hander this is called the Virage chicane very difficult to get right and it can cost you a lot of time you just need to take your time on the entry and focus on getting a good exit now heading under the game pod bridge and round here into the first of the three quick fire chicanes so you've got a right left first of all here which is one of the slower chicanes and this is the end of the first sector so let's see where Rietveld sits gets close to the wall on the exit there and um, don't think we're gonna get, I think actually we made the sector around this corner let's see where he is and um, yep he's it looks like he's identical to his time unless that's a glitch but I think he's actually perfectly identical to his time as he heads through the exit of the second chicane now gets once again gets close to the the wall sponsored by GamePod heading down this long stretch here towards the third of the chicanes under another bridge and it's heavy braking now into another fast right left this one's slightly faster than the other two chicanes and the exit is also important because this is the main overtaking opportunity on the track once again gets close to the wall on the exit and this is just showing how, how well this track really does flow uh, as Rietveld heads around a quick left hander now this is the heavy braking the slowest corner on track the hairpin um, and it, I think that must be a timing glitch because he's identical once again. Yeah, yeah. Heads out of the hairpin. This is this is a really important section because you need to nail this exit, and you, this is a massively important part of the track because, of course, the speed you carry, you carry all the way down uh, Casino Straight, um, which he's on right now. So Rietveld, you're getting right up to the top of the engine range of these V8 supercars, 
and then you're into a massively heavy braking zone down to the chicane which is the most important corner on the entire track you just need to miss those anti-cuts which Rietveld has actually hit them and maybe a bit too hard but we'll wait and see heads down the pit straight now uh, to across the line and does he, does he improve on his time? I That's don't think he will. Oh he, does. oh he does, wow! Just barely by about uh, half a tenth of a second that Rietveld improves his pole time uh, still has, has these other drivers stacking up behind him and uh, uh, Adrian Holm, Eunice Ravio, Jasper Talberg. But uh, at, at, for our viewers out there, if you're interested in the, watching the live timing and seeing exactly what's going on out there on the quality, just go to tornproseries.com slash live timing. You can, the live race is going to give you a full breakdown on exactly how these guys are running. And we apologize uh, uh, for our, 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 our timing uh, to, with our overlay here. Obviously, John uh, ran into the issue that uh, taking us through Rietveld's uh, lap where uh, our sector splits aren't exactly up there. We apologize for that because usually we will be able to have an overview on who's faster through each sector, who's, who's on a personal best, who's on overall best. So again, we apologize for that and make sure to go over to tournamentproseries.com slash live timing so you can uh, look at uh, uh, what's going on yourself. And meanwhile, we have Eunice Ravio who there jumps to second position, uh, surpassing Adrian Holm with a 137.4. Uh, now, I know Ravio's fastest time through the uh, uh, week of testing was, I think, a 137.3. So even his best is about four tenths off of what Rietveld is capable of. As you're seeing, as actually, there, uh, Ravio, uh, we're seeing his split to that second sector about two tenths up. So maybe, maybe I wonder if Rietveld actually. Uh, was uh, completely equal on his uh, uh, sector times through his lap there. Because, again, we're seeing another update on Talberg's time, about three tenths off through sector uh, sector two. Uh, so that, that's very interesting. Hopefully, maybe the timing isn't as bad as we thought it was, John. So, <laughs> that would uh, be right. remarkable. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be... It just shows how consistent refund is. Absolutely phenomenal that would be, then. Uh, taking a ride down the down the field a little bit. Eric Tavite shoots up to fifth position, so uh, that's very good for him. Uh, Tavite, remember, he's kind of been up and down this se se season. Uh, has had some really good results, like at Barbagello pace-wise, but other uh, other rounds he's been absolutely nowhere. Uh, Tavite uh, right, right now looks very good with his special ice cold livery for this uh, for this uh, North American leg of the championship. Uh, Matty Orban there in. in I'm sorry, sixth position. He's again showing his pace with that 138.2. That's certainly going to be a tough time to beat with less than five minutes to go on the board. Uh, Tommy O'Hala continues his good form with a THR Green there in sixth position. Eric Strawn there in eighth for, for another ice cold racing driver. Uh, he's missing his front clip there, but that's just a graphical glitch. He's just coming out the pits and he's about to just start his outlap. Kevin Brent. There on ninth position for THR Red, uh, Lars Brugman there in tenth. He's gonna be very happy with that. Remember at Watkins Den, he had a bit of an issue starting the event. Uh, well, th there was in question whether or not he was gonna actually make it to the grid. Wound up making it to the grid and finished, I believe, fourteenth or something like that. So uh, Lars, he's won for the dramatics, and again, he's looking very strong here this afternoon. We have David Yunt there in eleventh place. I believe uh, David is uh, he's eleventh place in the championship standings as well. So David continues his consistent form. Uh, Darren Adams there for core racing in 12th. Uh, we having Carlos Ortiz and John. I mean, we saw some very interesting situation with uh, Mr. Ortiz uh, last round at Watkins Glen. Uh, so uh, th this is a driver that's kind of all over the board, but uh, 13th, he's going to be happy with that pace indeed. Uh, Tristan Clark there for, I believe this is Optimum Sim Racing there in 14th position. They're going to be happy with that one. Uh, continuing the ride down the grid just to give you a full breakdown on it. We have Matt Richards, and I know you were just sent, mentioning uh, with Mr. Richards there, there, John, that he's really improved in these V8 supercars, but now struggling in quality with three minutes left. I mean, what, what's the psychology? What's the psychology for a driver that you you know you've got the pace, but you're just struggling to get it out during this quality session? Yeah, I think that's exactly that's, that's exactly it. It's it's all about the mental. Um, you know, position Matt Richards is in. He's just gone fifth in practice. He's feeling, you know, top of the world, and he thinks, you know, I can just go out there and pretty easily set, you know, one of these good lap times. And the pressure can just get to you so badly, and uh, you know, you'll be sitting there shaking at the steering wheel, 
trying to get up there, and especially now it's coming towards the end of the session. He's down in 16th, and he just needs to get in one. Basically, a clean lap would be enough for him because we saw him. It wasn't. It wasn't just a one-off lap. We saw him do it consistently up there in the top position. So if he can get inside the top 10, he'll be um, he'll be slightly more happy. But I think this is one of these things we've seen with Matt Richards. I think that's why we haven't seen him at the front more often. He's definitely shown you know great flashes of pace throughout his career and it has to be said he's improving massively but when it comes to race consistency he never seems to be able to live up to you know his, his pace pace wise expectations and I think this is this is something he needs to improve as he goes to 14 so it's not a big improvement for Matt Richards and we've seen faster times from him in practice so he'll definitely be looking to make his way further up the standings as Ravio goes pole it looks like Ravio what a lap Wow, Ravio, you're right. Ravio goes to 37 flat. I thought it was Reef I was looking at, but no, it's Eunice Ravio three tenths quicker than anything he's been able to produce through the two weeks of testing. So Ravio, now it's going to put the pressure on this man right here, Jeffrey Reef, uh, the precision driver. Remember, Reef has not been challenged for a pole position. Has taken every pole position once we were on these control tires. So now Reef is thinking, hey, <laughs> I've actually got a push now to get one of these pole positions because Ravio, once again, the man on form here, I, as he was at Watkins Glen for THR. So, uh, what do you think, John? Do you think uh, 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 Reefels got got some more pace in that car? Can he get it out in the last minute uh, and then change here to go? Remember, I think this is going to be his last lap, John. So, uh, uh, call it. Who's going to take pole position here? Well, Ravio's lap has literally set fire to this qualifying session. Rietfeld, he, know, he's, he was sitting in the pits thinking, you know, he's got pole position absolutely in the bag. And Ravio has just ripped it straight out again. He's got the pole position. Jeffrey Rietfeld flies out of the pit lane with literally one or two seconds to spare. And he needs to nail this out lap because we saw him leaving the pit lane with, you know, one minute, 37 seconds to go in the session. So he, he's going to be so close. We need to follow him because he's going to be so close whether he reaches the finish line in time. I think he will just do it because the pit lane exit, of course, runs, um, you know, straight through turn one, which saves you quite a few seconds. So he should make it, barring no mistakes. But Rietfeld now, this is almost like a super pole position for Rietfeld. He's yeah. got one lap to beat a 37. Seven zero. He, we've seen him do it before. We've seen him do thirty six nines in testing, but he did not manage one in practice. So he really does need to pull one out the bag here, or else we'll have a shock posi pull position in Judas Ravio. Yeah, we're going to stay here on board with Reefeld as he's about to come to come to the stripe. He's got about ten seconds to do it. So I think you're right, John. He's going to be able to get this car across across the stripe here. So let's actually ride on board with Mr. Jeffrey Reefeld. Sorry for rotating through the cameras there. Reefeld, he takes to a strike with only a second to go. That's <laughs> absolutely times that to perfection, I suppose. This is going to be the lap to see if he can claim pole position as he takes us, to, as he goes through sector one. So John, take us through this lap. Can Reefeld do it? Yeah, so for the second time in this session, we jump on board with Jeffrey Reefeld. This is the lap that counts for him. Uh, second position won't, won't, won't kill him, but it'll definitely hurt his confidence because he was so confident going into this race, as were we for him. So he's heading now. Where where is he sitting? First section he gets so close to that wall. Let's see where he is through the split. And he's Ooh. up. He's actually up by just under a tenth. So it's very very close at the moment with Reetfeld. Exits the chicane. It's looked like a reasonably tidy lap. Not perfect, but definitely not bad in any way. So now Reetfeld's heading down the back stretch. He does not get a slipstream from the car ahead, but it's good that it gets out of the way. Now heading into the third of the quick fire chicanes. He gets slowed down. Does he get slowed down enough? Yes, he does. Turned in nicely there, and he is purple through the first sector. Let's see where he sits after sector two which he heads under in just a couple of seconds towards the hairpin. I think this is the Sector 2 line just coming up now. And he's still up by six, uh, oh, six hundredths of a second. So he's improved literally by 1,000 on Ravio's time in that second sector. It's all about this now. He exits the hairpin really well, heading down the back stretch. It's Casino Straight, this is known as. And this is literally it for Jeffrey Rietfeld. Will he be able to snatch the pole position away from Ravio? It's all about the last chicane. They're so tightly matched going in here. Whatever happens in the chicane will determine who's first and who's second on the grid, but a great session by both of them regardless. As Rietfeld heads through the chicane, does he get hit the World Champions? Just misses it, and that's a perfect line through the chicane. Rietfeld is heading towards the line. Will he be able to knock Ravio off the pole position? Yes, he does! Oh, wow, an absolute heartbreaking for Mr. Uh, Eunice Radio, but Jeffrey Reed felt like a true veteran sim race, like he goes to the he takes it to the absolute wire, takes pole position from Eunice Radio by about half a tenth of a second. It, it was that close, perhaps our closest quality session we've seen all season, considering how long this track is there, John. So, oh, wow, I mean, that's going to close out our, our, our quality session. Let's see if anyone else is finishing a lap here. 
I think, yep, that, that, is, that is it as we are now heading into our five-minute warm-up with uh, Jeffrey Reek out there on pole position. So just take you a quick uh, a rundown through the order. Uh, obviously, Reith uh, just takes an absolutely uh, a clutch pole position from Eunice Ravio. You almost get the sense that he was just waiting uh, for, for a challenger on these control tires, and he absolutely had the lap when he had to have it. So Eunice Ravio takes second position, denied his second pole position of the season. Of course, Ravio uh, got one at Barbagello race two. Uh, Jasper Tauber quietly sits there in third position, about four tenths off uh, 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 Ravio and Reef out there. Uh, Adrian Holm for Lazy Man Racing in fourth position, so he comes good from his uh, pre-practice time, which I think he was also for. So, very well done, Adrian Holm. Eric Servait there for Ice Cold R uh, Racing is in fifth, so he's going to be happy with that. Chris Butcher sneaks up to sixth position with a 138.1, and you're seeing a massive drop-off between first and sixth, a second between those guys. So, uh, certainly the top five are maybe with a little bit more to play with, uh, Speed-wise, and uh, this, this bottom half of the top 10, but Matty Orban for DPG Motorsports in 7th position, uh, just a close by Chris Butcher, it should be said. Tommy Ohala there in ninth place for THR. Eric Strawn slips into the uh, top 10 on ninth uh, with Kevin Brents rounding out your top 10, taking a ride back through outside the top 10. Lars Brugman for Optimum Sim Racing there in the 11th with David Yunt for THR in 12th. Darren Adams for core racing and third teams with Kevin Enderman. Ken uh, Enderman continuing to impress with his pace for uh, down under racing. Obviously, he's teammates with Andy Johns. Uh, so, Kevin, he's only happy with that. Matt Richards, uh, very unfortunate. He cannot really get his head wrapped around the quality conditions. Perhaps a little too much pressure for the young driver, and he gets... Fifth place, fifteenth place, where he was within the top five through pre-practice. So very uh, much a disappointment for Matt Richards, the Aerostream driver. Uh, Heinz Petzl, who's been on tremendous form as of late, there in sixteenth for Core Racing with Carlos Ortiz in his uh, very out there round uh, five at Watkins Glen. Now uh, uh, consolidates with a seventeenth of uh, uh, for this race at Montreal. Uh, Tristan Clark there is going to be happy with that 18th position there for Autumn Sim Racing. Bruno Salsa Ferreira, uh, Ferreira there for Walk Racing. And I talked to Bruno before the event, and he, he he's not too confident going into going into the race. Thinks the pace is about normal, but he's looking forward to perhaps making up positions just through uh, other drivers' mistakes. So eight, 19th position, that's going to be a good place for him to do that. Kevin Angwin, another driver I talked to before the race. He's again, hasn't put in the practice time he's won it for this event, but uh, he's, he's going to be happy with the 12th place, uh, tw 20th uh, uh, grid place for this one. Again, he can just hopefully make it make up some places through the race. Uh, he's driving again for T DPG Motorsports. Continuing to cycle through uh, the, the grid. We have 27, uh, 26 runners here, but Andy Johns again, one of the teammates to Kevin Enderman there in 21st position. Lee Palmer in 22nd for Ice Cold Racing with Sebastian Rosemeyer for another DPG driver there in 23rd. Rob Taplin, who didn't really have that great a pace through pre-practice, but manages 24th, about three seconds off a of pole, uh, two seconds off a of pole time, I should say, two and a half seconds. So not too bad for that for, for, for Mr. Taplin. Uh, Jonathan Okerklint there for Optimum Sim Racing in 25th with Ethan Bass rounding out our grid in 26th for Sim Speed Ford. And Ethan, out of all the drivers I talked to going into this uh, event today, John. He was the guy who was the most uh, pessimistic even uh, about this event. Said he could not wrap his mind around this track. To, to get his car to really take off outside the braking zones to, to, to accelerate rather. It's been a ma massive chore for him in, in the two weeks of testing and he's not really looking forward to this event so hopefully it can only go, get better from, him, from from here on out as he sits uh, last on the grid. Hopefully Ethan can uh, turn it around. Uh, as, as we move forward now, again, we're only 30 seconds left in, in uh, we, we have warm up here. We found that some of the drivers are uh, just warming themselves back up. So, I mean, John, who's your pick to win this race? Because obviously it seems like now Re uh, Ravio is on the level with Reef. Uh, maybe Tallberg, maybe Home could sneak up into this conversation. I mean, who, who's your guy? Um, you, you just cannot go against Jeffrey Reefeld. I mean, that's that's the problem. We've got one guy. Well, I, well, so we thought we had one guy absolutely dominating the practice, and it looked like he was dominating the qualifying. Ravio comes out of absolutely nowhere, sets a great quality pace, but of course we're yet to see if he can do it in the race conditions. Um, whereas Rietveld has proved himself on these controlled tyres that he can do it, um, taking a couple of wins and of course leading the championship. So, uh, um, like, unfortunately it's impossible to bet against Rietveld, and you'll probably agree with that, but I mean, it would be great to see some, some action up front. I hope Ravio can put up a great 
fight with Jeffrey, make him really work for it, and he's going to win this. And um, you know, anything can happen, so we can see a surprise winner. But um, it's going to be really difficult for anyone to topple the mighty Jeffrey Rootbelt. Yeah, and now we are getting ready. We are going to grid here. But the drivers have about 20 seconds to, to get themselves together before uh, we start our pace lap. So, uh, again, John, I think you called it right. It, it's pretty much uh, uh, any. It, it, it's really hard to go against Reefa at this stage. I mean, I'm kind of pulling for Ravio. I think he's really matured as a driver. I think the round at Watkins then really helped him out for, TH, for driving for THR. And I think he's really filling in well for Toby Davis, who, again, is absent. Uh, uh, for, for this race today. Obviously, Toby will miss our entire North American League of the Championship. He was gone for Watkins Glen, now here again at Montreal. And just really quick about the team's championship. I mean, it was suspected that Precision was absolutely going to walk away with this thing because uh, THR losing Toby Davis. But because now T uh, 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 Precision have lost Simon Keeloff for this round, it kind of equalizes uh, uh, that, that gap of 30 to, uh, 29 points with uh, between THR Orange and Precision Motorsports. I mean, it's going to make it back. It's going to make it seem that now it's going to be whoever finishes, uh, whoever wins this race, as in uh, whoever finishes in front of one another, I should say, either Rietfeld or Talberg, is going to take the advantage for their uh, subsequent t team in this title hunt. So, again, it kind of equalizes things. Hopefully now uh, for next round, round round seven, we have Toby Davis and Keyloff back, which is only going to help add more excitement to the t uh, uh, team's championship. So, anyhow, we are back on our, we're on our, our pace lap here. Uh, as the guys just gonna warm up their tires and get to grid here, uh, I, I mean, John, uh, we talked about who is going who is going to win it, but the guy I want to I want to uh, focus on uh, very quickly here as we ride down through the grid. I mean, we have guys like Matty Orban who's who's there in seventh position. We have Chris Butcher in sixth, but then we have Matt Richards again, one of the top drivers through pre practice. Do you think he's gonna be able to get up the grid, or perhaps now is it just gonna be a bad race for 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 uh, Matt? Uh, stuff uh, stuck in traffic. I think we've seen him, you know, deep down in the grid before as he's running off in the warm-up lap. <laughs> but um, we've, we've seen him deep down down the grid before, and he has previously struggled in, in getting that race consistency. And um, so, you know, I'm not sure if we'll see him re really high up there, but I'm hoping he gets a good result, and I hope he really does prove me wrong. And uh, you know, try go, go for the win, Matt. <laughs> Let's see if Matt Rich. <laughs> I bet uh, say, saying this, uh, saying that he's inconsistent, I'm sure he'll probably end up winning the race. But, um, yeah. but spe speaking of winning the race, I was, you know, going on about how dominant Rietveld's been and how you know how difficult it's going to be for anyone to beat him. But he is of course not not flawless and not in you know he's he's not indestructible because we saw the second race of Simmons Plains if anyone was watching that a cracker of an event we saw Jeffrey Rietveld leading the race so easily and he made a mistake and he crashed into the wall and that cost him a very victory so it's definitely not out of the question that you know Rietveld won't win this race it's it's just it's going to be it's going to be difficult to beat him but um we we have seen him make a mistake previously so it's not guaranteed Yes, now that everyone's going to the grid, we're seeing uh, Reedfeld kind of angle his car off the grid. He does this for each each race, so I'm pretty sure he's just tries he trying to cut off the angle to that second place driver, and, and obviously this round is Junior's Radio. So we're seeing the cars in the back just tuck into their grid spots, and again we're going to be getting the lights only in a few seconds here as the final cars hit their grid marks, and we're about to go green flag uh, here for round seven, round six rather, at Montreal in Canada for the second part of the North. American Lake as we're getting the light this one two three four we are at five lights five lights are out Jeffrey Reed felt very nice off the line he covers ter tremendously well from Eunice Ravio as everything stays status quo we're seeing home there trying to get around Talberg on the outside he goes deep Talberg's going to keep that position meanwhile Reed felt from Ravio from Talberg it stays status quo at the front let's see what's going on down the grid a little bit as we're seeing I think Matte Orban trying to get at Chris Butcher here around in sector one and who's at the off in the background while car is spun who is that? It's Lars Brugman is contacting the two core racing drivers. Oh no. Oh, that's terrible. Who 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 are the core racing drivers? Is that Adams, I believe? Uh, Adams it? and uh, Petzl, it looks like. So I'm going to take a quick replay, see if I can find out what happened there. Oh uh, yeah, we've lost. Uh, uh, Adams going to be oh. tremendously upset about that. It was Matt Richards that hit Lars Brugman in the braking zone. Oh, that's a shame. It was Lord, uh, Matt, Matt Richards. Uh, let's see, where, let's see where, where Matt Richards is. Maybe he, he suffered damage because of that. I mean, oh, that's a tremendous shame. Matt Richards up to 12, so uh, maybe, maybe maybe that car is okay. Maybe well, this is the battle pack here. Hey, look at yeah. Lord. 
let's take a look at Matt Richards' car. That car looks okay, but I mean, he's got a lot of traffic in front of him. Let's see if he can keep that car now on the road. Obviously, he's going to be upset about what what happened there. I mean, certainly, uh, a Lars Brugman's not going to be too happy, and and, and those guys. But uh, uh, regardless, the race carries on here uh, at, at Midpack. David Young still holds 11th uh, from Kevin Brents, who's qualified 10th. But looks like he's under tremendous pressure here from David Young. Oh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, that's the car in front, but it, it, it's young against Richards, and Richards trying to go on the outside here uh, just to, hit, to go through the wall of champions. Very tight stuff up at the uh, up in here in mid pack. Uh, I mean, the driver that's going to uh, make make out okay is the driver that's going to keep his head under because we're already seeing some drivers run the contact like we saw with Matt Richards. So uh, these guys really have to keep their head under them, John. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Matt, Matt just, I mean, he's definitely making his mark on the race in the first lap. We haven't stopped <laughs> following already, but he just needs to, you know, keep keep his head. He's got 47 laps, you know, you can't win the race in the first couple of laps, so you can most certainly lose it, as we all say. So, you know, Matt Richards just needs to take his time a little bit more. It's pretty much status quo out there at the front, and, um, yeah, just heading back to that incident with Lars, it just looked like Matt slightly misjudged the breaking point on the first lap. And um, it, it wasn't a big hit, it was a, it was a slight nudge, unfortunately, it was enough to you know, sp spin the option from the car, he was already turning into the corner, so it was a bit of an unfortunate incident, and I'm sure there'll be not too many hard feelings after the race, but yeah, as I'm saying, status quo at the front, it looks like Rietveld um, has built a slight gap to Ravio, who, who has built a, an even bigger gap to Jesper Tolberg, so it's two seconds covers the top three, and then it looks like we've got a big line uh, from third downwards uh, at the minute, with uh, Tolberg leading from home, and that's third and fourth position ahead of Eric Tveit who's made a strong start in fifth and Chris Butcher in sixth Matej Orban in seventh and Tommy Oyala making his debut for THR in the series is running in eighth position yeah just to uh, update the viewers on the back oh, here, we're on camera yeah oh who is that spun off in the background it was, we were just following the battle between Kevin Brents and Lee Palmer there's a Pereira I, yeah so fair he's off so uh, he's he's gonna have trouble trying to get back up the grid, but I just want to uh, continue to track this battle here with Enderman and Lee Palmer. Lee Palmer gets around. Lee Palmer up from 22nd position now running 13th. But he's gonna be tremendously happy with with, with where he, where he's at right now as this battle pack continues to go on. And there's Yunt now trying to get back across from from Matt Richards. Richards obviously got through 411. Let's see if Yunt can have a look in the turn one. Not going to happen. Just going to take a quick uh, ride on board the front, like you were saying. Uh, 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 there, there, John. Uh, at the front, Reefer continues to lead by two seconds. So, uh, just going to uh, get the standings working for you here again, very quickly. Uh, one second here, just run the top speed zone. This is positions up and down from the grid. Uh, just give me a second to sort this out for you. And there we go. We are back to uh, the, the proper overlay there. You reach out with a 1.5 second gap to Eunice Ravio in second. Jasper Talberg uh, up the road in third place, going to try to fend off Adrian Holm. But I mean, you were seeing that the guys at the front sort this out very uh, professionally, very quickly here. Really, nothing, no change to the running order of the top, top six even. Uh, so it seems very much status quo at the front. Obviously, to fight and home, probably the closest battle of those top five runners. So. Unless that develops, we'll, we'll continue to ride toward the back of the field. Matt T. Orban there in uh, 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 seventh with Tommy O'Hara in eighth. Eric Strong continues to hold ninth from Kevin Brents. Very status quo again at the front of the field. Uh, Matt Richards and uh, uh, the, the, we have David Young continuing to go at it. Uh, and Lee Palmer has now pull, pulled a gap to Kevin Enderman and actually up just up front of that. Here's Young back across from Matt Richards. These guys just really won't let each other get away as Jeffrey Weefout says that that's the fastest time of, of the race. That's a quality lap, a 137.4. So Weefout again checking out uh, the, at the early stages of this race with those uh, control tires. Uh, who's that? There's one of the core drivers in the background there. See if we can ride on board with him uh, as he continues to move up the try to move up the field. Actually, let me just see what's going on with this optimal driver. Lars Brugman, remember he got spun. Now trying to get around Ethan Bass. Ethan up from 26 on the grid. Now now trying to hold off Lars Brugman, who's going to be tremendously desperate to get back up the field. We're seeing a lot of damage there on Lars's car. He has that front end bashing. Remember, hit the wall first lap, first sector of the race. So Lars, he's still got a, a solid amount of pace in that car as he's challenging Ethan and uh, is trying to hold off Sebastian Rosemeyer in behind him. So again, Lars going to try to recover from how his race started. Has a peak there on the inside. Not going to happen. Uh, Heinz Petzold. Remember, Heinz started, I believe, 16th. Now down to 19th. Got kind of caught out by that 
uh, shenanigans between uh, 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 Matt Richards and obviously Lars Brugman. But uh, Hines has recovered well, further 20 seconds, so he's uh, continuing on uh, up up the field. And I, I, I mean, John, we're seeing a lot of these cars. Uh, <laughs> Not, not. Besides the Matt Richards uh, 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 contact, these guys have been very clean. And ooh, who's that? Andy Johnson oh. spins there on oh, the no. tarmac. Oh, that's, that's certainly not good. I mean, uh, talk about just trying to get these nerves under control here at the, on the opening laps of an event like this, uh, 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 John. Yeah, definitely. It's it's so difficult. The pressure. Um, honestly, it's, it's really actually even at the race start, if you're holding the clutch on, for example, it, it's almost difficult to not you know let go of the clutch and just let the car go. It's actually harder. To, to you know to actually keep yourself there it's natural reaction you just want to go you just want to get going then you know the adrenaline is absolutely pumping through your blood and it definitely hasn't helped the core guys who've had a shocker of a start i was actually talking to them earlier and it kind of follows what they were saying because you know this they were telling me heinz petzl was saying to me he's really struggling with the setup a bit and um, they're finding it difficult to be consistent so they're not feeling as strong as usual and um and it's really really just continued that trend here with it taking two cars being involved in the first lap incident that originally had nothing to do with them uh, one man we've seen a lot of so far in this race david junt in 12th position behind matt richards and um, just want to give a quick mention of well done to him because we saw him in the virtual mini challenge final race final round at mid ohio and um, you know picking up a fantastic fourth position he was actually involved in the lead battle heading on to the last lap so he's definitely proving himself as a racer along with matt richards ahead of him uh, so yeah we've got a, a really interesting field here we've got a few battles going on also a bit of spread at the front uh, with as we were saying it really did stay status status quo I mean it's almost as if the drivers got together for a meeting before the race <laughs> yeah. and said look I'll not overtake you if you don't overtake me and they seem to have um, really that is good it's great to see a clean start I mean maybe it's not as exciting when you don't have cars and um, you know flying into each other or making great overtakes and stuff but on the first couple laps it's just all about staying on the track so yeah it's good to see these these front eight guys have been really sensible about this and held it together well yeah, and uh, I, it, 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 I, we haven't seen a race like this all season where the fronts kind of just stayed uh, in the grid spots, like, so to speak. So uh, the guy I've been very impressed with is this man right here, Lee Palmer, who has not dropped back from anyone. It's just completely on the charge up from 20 seconds on the grid. It's now caught uh, David Young and uh, uh, obviously Matt Richards. So, I mean, Lee Palmer, maybe this is a driver one for a top 10. I don't know what's got into Lee, but he's looking very racy to start off this race with only, uh, obviously only... In, within the first six laps here so maybe he's just really comfortable on these control tires wants to have uh, that fresh rubber on them uh, i'm curious how how this car, how this car is going to hold up as we get later on in this race uh once, once those tires leave him a little bit but again he's right on the back of david yeah i mean that's right on board here with mr uh lee palmer and he's got right right right, right next to that wheel hub there uh, again david's not getting anywhere just kind of getting pulled in by by this uh, ice cold driver and and lee palmer as as uh young's rear end steps out just a little bit from him uh just take a quick update at the front while we ride on board with this uh the jeffrey we is now 3.5 seconds ahead uh, of uh, uh Eunice Ravio, but tall break has now closed the gap to Ravio. And this Young now off the track. Is Palmer going to be able to get a run? No, it seems like uh, uh, Young had a pretty nifty cut there through that chicane. It's going to hold his uh, uh, pace, which is okay. Obviously, that was an honest mistake by Young. Uh, so it looks like Palmer's going to have to now uh, plan his move uh, through Casino straight. We'll see if he's got the run. I'm curious if he does. He's he's got he's definitely close enough to uh, uh, David to make make a make a move here. Let's see if he can get that car alongside Yunt's uh, THR machine to make a pass. I'm not sure. Yunt's got he's stepping out away from Palmer on the straight. We'll see if Lee can get up to the back of him. I do not think he's going to be able to as things now stay uh, status quo between those guys. So let's take a quick update at the front. Eunice Ravio is not being caught by Jasper Talberg. I mean, do you think there's going to be any type of team orders at play here, John? Because obviously, Jasper Talberg eight points shy off uh, the construct uh, the, the the driver's title, and THR they need THR Orange need every point they can get in the constructors to, to um, help uh, uh, close that gap to precision. So, do you think there's going to be any type of orders here from THR? Um, I think I think there could be. I mean, it looks like Jesper does have the slightly stronger race pace at the present moment, and Ravio, of course, being you know the the young upstart in THR, you know, recent joined more recently. Uh, of course, the Tolberg who's been feels like he's been there forever, and uh, THR Orange are of course fighting for this team's championship. They're going to need every point they can get, especially with with Kilov and Davis missing. And um, you know, we could see team orders play out. THR, we've seen them in, in the past battling sometimes unsuccessfully with two cars ending up in the wall. So um, it's going to be interesting to. See. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. 
Um, actually, so um, just while while we were following these guys, I just noticed Matt Richards dropped down about five positions, and I watched the replay, and he got sideways through the chicane, and he's the first victim of the Wall of Champions. And this is the man we've been talking about, and um, you know who's been struggling with inconsistency in the past. So maybe he's just proving proving us right there. You know, he's he's crashed into the Wall of Champions within the first six laps, and although it, his car's still going, he may have a bit of damage, and you're never going to be able to win races or finish in top positions, and um, if you if you can, can't get through without having a crash. So it's a bit of a shame for Matt Richards with such good practice pace but um, that's just the way it's going uh, another man you were following Lee Palmer uh, when I was speaking to the whole of Dice Cold Camp everyone seemed happy with the setup except him so I'm surprised to see him doing so well and I'm sure he's also pleasantly surprised because he was really struggling with the setup in practice and he, and he seems to have just got it together he was at the back of the grid he's making his way up thick and fast having a great battle with David Junt but of course his teammates um, Eric Devite in particular you know doing even better up in fifth yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Matt Richards down to 16th, Lee now is still holding 12th. Uh, th th this battle right here we're watching with Matthew Orban, Tommy O'Hala, Eric Strong, Kevin Brents is really picking up. Uh, the thing about O'Hala, he seems to have fallen back to these guys behind him. Uh, maybe he's, have, he's having trouble with those tires as we're now at one lap 8 of the event. Meanwhile, Eric Strong seems very uh, racy now behind uh, Matty Orban. Uh, we'll see if Strong can now get up. Remember, Strong, I believe he started nice, so he, he's held his position well. Uh, Kevin Brents, remember, Kevin, who's in behind on this battle, has not has been vocal about his dismay of the control tires. Does not like him whatsoever. He's much stronger on the sprint tires, but so far within the top 10, strong result here so far from the THR Red Driver. Uh, I think what we're going to see in the next few laps here, John, is, is who really has uh, the, the grip of these control tires under race conditions, because now we're getting close uh, uh, to the, the, the first pit one. I'm, I'm guessing we have another five to eight laps Ooh. to go before we hit it. Ooh, yeah, I think that was, uh, what was that? Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Brent. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. A bit of a trouble. So, I mean, what, what's what's the pit strategy uh, you, you're hearing so far, John, as as uh, with this race? I mean, do we have any three stoppers uh, out there, or, or is it just a pure two-stop strategy today? Well, it's impossible to make a one-stop strategy work because the fuel well, is there's simply not a big enough fuel cell to carry enough for a one-stop strategy. And um, so most of these drivers will be aiming for the two stops. Unlikely we will see any three stops, but if they're being interesting, yeah, you're just following Matt Richards. And about half a lap ago, um, he crashed into the wall. On the, he actually touched the grass on the exit of the first chicane, crashed into the wall, and he's unfortunately he's proving my point about the inconsistency. <laughs> and he and he, he's got big damage, and he's in last position. So a re really action back start from Matt Richardson. I'm sure he will be gutted after the pace he showed in practice. And I'm I'm sorry to be to be kind of uh, taking your attention away from everything else and talking about him, but he seems to be you know the person who's creating the attention right now by spinning out of the chicane now crashing you know <laughs> once again. And and it's just that consistency that he needs if he wants to finish in those high positions. Yeah, it's very unfortunate for Mr. Richards, but I'm, I've been tracking Eunice Ravio. He's he's lost position to Talberg, lost it to home there for a minute, but has gotten back around home. So either, uh, I believe, maybe a little bit of contact between uh, uh, Talberg and Ravio, or Ravio's tires have completely abandoned him, as now it looks like he's got home and Eric to fight breathing right down his neck. Remember, Ravio was so brilliantly strong at Watkins Glen under a full race, under a full race stint, and managed to really stick with Riefeld, even with these control tires. But now it seems that he's lost a bit of that edge that he had, what, had at a, that he had at Watkins Glen, and is now uh, being caught by Home and Savai, who seem a fair bit quicker at Watkins Glen. We'll see now what Ravio can do as we again uh, continue to approach the first pit window. Uh, but this is not good for Ravio. It looks like Home is right tucked in behind that car. Let's actually ride on board with Mr. Adrian Home. Let's see what he's seeing uh, out, out, out the windshield of that. LMR Lazy Man Racing Car, which is going to turn one, closes right down on Ravio through the braking zones, which is just natural with these cars. Uh, he's only almost touched there, Ravio. Ravio, we're seeing him get very sideways through that complex, and maybe I I'm, I'm thinking that, yeah, John, he's just running out on those tires there. Uh, I mean, explain the challenges of r uh, keeping the, the tires in check on races this long with cars this heavy. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't. It just looks like Ravio is really struggling at the moment. I'm not sure if he made a mistake, which allowed Tolberg or maybe he let him pass. But he, he, but it doesn't. It looks like tires. It just looks like he's he's sliding the car everywhere. And although you know the characteristic of this car is to be sideways quite often, it just looks like he's um, maybe pushing a little bit too hard. And um, so I'd just like to add in. I did notice that um, Heinz Petzold was also taken out in the Matt Richards incident, which is very unfortunate and once again continues Core's bad luck because Petzold 
Um, he's actually out the race. He's retired from the race. So a real shame for him. He showed such good pace so far this season, and it looks like he was. When I was speaking to him earlier, he'd just been struggling first of all with Montreal, and then of course being involved in a lap one incident. Nothing to do with him. Um, with what <laughs> with Matt Richards, funnily enough, and then Matt Richards goes and crashes, and Petzl gets involved in it. Nothing either driver could have done to avoid that. But a real real nightmare start for Core. And um, but back at the front, of course, it is the battle between um, Ravio and um, Holm is the main talking point at the moment as we look through some of the drivers further down the grid which we should also give a mention to. Yeah, I was just tracking this battle between Enderman, Ortiz and Kevin Agwin. These guys have been very close with one another and again another driver stepping out, Kevin Enderman. So uh, it seems like the tire concerns are really uh, 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 affecting the field from first to now 25 as obviously we've lost uh, a very unfortunately Heinz Petzl. He's going to be very disappointed about that one. But it seems like now it's going to be a, t a battle of attrition of who can keep the tires together longer into the stints because now these cars are really stepping out, especially once these guys get on the power. We're seeing guys really getting close to that wall of champions. Uh, Kevin Enderman now trying to defend here from Kevin uh, Angwin, the two Kevins in the in the league. So we'll see what Mr. Angwin can do driving for DPG Motorsports. Obviously, his teammate Matty Orban up in 10th position. So regardless, it's looking for like a very strong result for DPG uh, uh, Motorsports. We'll see if uh, now uh, uh, Angwin can get around Enderman for that fifth for that 14 position. Remember, Enderman, I believe he finished uh, around 14 or inside the top 15 at Watkins. Claire said he was not, he didn't see he could get anywhere near that today at Montreal, but so far, so good for Mr. Enderman. Uh, just wanted to go back to the leaders uh, as there is uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Reitfeld. Now it was a 6.2 second gap to Jasper Talbot. So again, three three races on the control tires, three absolute walk away performances so far from Mr. Reitfeld. Now obviously there's a fair bit of racing we still have to go uh, here uh, here at Montreal. But what's made Reitfeld so good is that if through the pit stops, he's usually able to gain on his competitors. So. Uh, again, we haven't really even reached the strongest section of Reitfeld's racing ability, and that's when he gets that car into the garage. And actually, that's been pretty much precision strong point through the championship, is these guys have been able to pit so well. And I, I know it seems like a very minor thing to our viewers, but that transition of getting that car into your pit, pit stall and getting it out very quickly can pretty much uh, win the race for you. Because we've seen Toby Davis in particular, THR's top man, really struggle with those transitions this year and, and with his pitting and it's cost him even a race win at in some, at some point so that's something we got we have to look out for as this race continues to develop meanwhile we have Eunice Ravio now pulled the gap here to Adrian Holm and Eric to fight so it seems like maybe Ravio had a bit of a, a, a tough time a few laps ago maybe just made a, a simple mistake to get caught up by this uh, LMR and ICE, uh, ICR, uh, uh, Lazy Man Racing and Ice Cold Racing driver, but seems like uh, Ravio's got the best of these guys now uh, uh, together. We're seeing Chris Butcher in behind these guys. Butcher, he started six on the grid, is now running a six. So he can be very happy about that. I mean, just a very, uh, I guess, uneventful race for Mr. Butcher. I mean, I think he needs one of those after some of some, some of the stuff he's been into recently. I know in, in virtual mini challenge, he struggled at some time with some equipment failures and some very bad luck. But I believe he was the double win, uh, double race winner at uh, uh, the, at middle higher, if I'm not mistaken, John. So this is a yep. driver who's very much on form. Yeah, definitely, and um, he's definitely he found the he's finding the car today well balanced uh, is what he was telling me, but he didn't do much practice. But I mean, he's still looking very quick and consistent in sixth position, and um, he's getting the most out of that car. We know how capable a driver is. Um, is Chris Butcher? You know, he's sh he's proved it in Red Bull Gristers. He's proved it across TPS over many seasons, and. Um, you know, maybe today he's just lacking that pace to really fight with his teammate Alberg and Ravio for the for the podium slot. But I mean, to be running in top six in such a competitive league is very impressive. And um, I have noticed actually we finally had a change in the top eight with Stran and Kevin Brent up, up passing Orban and Uyala. I don't know if there was an incident there, or it might just be tire tire wear. And um, so that's the second change, of course, after Tolberg's pass Ravio. So you know, we're still we're still getting a pretty consistent laps going on at the front of the field. And um, some drivers in particular are struggling more than others. And um, like the man you're looking at, Matty Orban, who has dropped back a couple of positions, and the man behind him making his um, debut for THR. He's actually also joined from Optimum um, by Rasmus Salo. So so um, Rasmus Salo and Tommy Oyala both moving. Uh, jumping ship um, from optimum to THR, so um, that's an interesting move. And Ayala's doing a great job so far, running in the top ten ahead of his new teammate David Yunt in eleventh position. So yeah, um, a really good race from these guys so far. 
Um, we've not seen too much action, although it does look like Ayala's missing his front bumper, so maybe yeah, that suggests that, Orban yeah. and Tommy had an incident. That that might just suggest that. Maybe Oyala hit the back of Orban, causing a spin, maybe, and maybe um, Oyala waited for him or something. But that looks like damage to me, so um, maybe we might have missed something. Apologies if we have. Um, of course, there's so much going on at one time, it's really difficult to catch everything. But um, <laughs> one thing you definitely can't catch is Jeffrey Reitveld at the moment. Yeah, Reefa continues to extend his gap. It looks like definitely some damage to Ohala's guy. Chris Butcher, though, has gotten around Eric to fight for that fifth position, so uh, it's a shame we missed that one for you as well, but it seems like Chris Butcher, just as we got to him, it seems like now he's really starting to pick it up with these control ties. Slides his guard going into that final chicane there and, uh, and then pushes out to the wall of champions, but Eric Tavite, another guy is looking very strong, but regardless, Chris Butcher gets around him for that fifth position. Uh, we'll continue to take a ride through the grid as we continue to end this first. Here we have actually Tommy O'Hala right on cue going into uh, his pit stall. So this is a, a slightly early for, uh, a two, for a two stop strategy, but you can still make it happen. I think he's pretty much going into the pits maybe to prepare this damage. Let's see what he's going to do as he finds a stall. Remember, O'Hala, uh, I think he's still, this is just going to still put him on that two stop strategy. I'm curious if we're going to get any other runners. They're going to go in early as well, but so far only uh, Ohala is in the pits. Uh, this, but he might actually be in there for quite a bit since he's got to repair that uh, front bumper. We have and Jonathan Ogleton out from 20, uh, 25th on the grid now in 19th after passing Mr. Ohala in the pits. Uh, Bruno Sasa Friera there in 20th. Uh, Tristan Clark, you actually seen up there in, 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 in uh, 16th, so it seems like we've got some guys really taking advantage of other drivers' mistakes at this point. Uh, we're seeing uh, R R Sebastian Rosemeyer in a fight with Andy Johns here for 21st position. Uh, these two drivers, uh, obviously not having the most pace, but they have to, they've done solid. Remember, get these points inside Division One will do you good regardless, and you have to make sure to finish these races on a on a good note. And it looks like R R Rosemeyer is now on the back. Uh, Sosa Fiara trying to get that 20th position. So that's really going to help Rosemeyer if he can do that. Uh, so we have Oka Clint, we have uh, uh, Fiara, we have Rosemeyer, we have Andy Johns fighting and a bit of a scrum there at the back of the pack. Uh, we have Ethan Bass one lap down having a very tough time out there uh, here this afternoon. Again, remember he wasn't too confident going to this race to begin with, so he, he's not going to be uh, uh, tremendously uh, surprised by how he did here today so far, but uh, Regardless, he can continues to carry on for Sim Speed Racing. Hopefully, he can come into some position as things could progress here. Uh, Ohala goes to one lap down after he goes. Uh, actually, I believe he's still in the lead lap, but uh, Ohala, he's gone through the pits, got that front bumper back on that car. And we have uh, Adrian Holm now back in the pits, so it looks like we are we are back to yeah, Holm 11.2 uh, seconds on his pit stop. That's actually a very good uh, stop there from Mr. Holm. Meanwhile, at the front, we have uh, Reefa continuing the, the stay out. Actually, there's an uh, update our viewers on who's out. Matt Richards now out of the event. Andy Johns. Wait, DNF for Andy Johns. What happened there? We were just watching Andy. I mean, uh, I, uh, 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 John, are you seeing anything on the replay? I'm not really um, sure what. You could probably grab a replay on the broadcast if you quickly jumped to him because it wasn't long ago. I'll yeah, see me... if I can find anything. Yeah, let's, let's go to Andy Johns. Actually, let's, let's, let's actually let's stick with the pits to see who's into the pits right now. I uh, believe that's another. I think that's uh, we have Matt Matty Orban into the pits. Um, I think Andy Jones. I think he just disconnected. Um, his car, his car just seemed to lag out um, by the looks of things, and let um, like he left the game. So maybe a disconnection there for Andy Jones, which is very unfortunate. It didn't look like an incident to me. Um, so that's that's a real shame for him. Who's he was having? A, you know, he was having a great race. Um, similar to Ayala, who um, who was also having a great race before he's been spoiled by that damage. But I think with his choice to pit. Uh, for Tommy Oyala, I think what he's doing is damage limitation. You know, he says I can try and get a repaired car. You know, it'll make I'll have to stretch the two-stop strategy out a bit yeah. longer the next tires, but I'd rather have a fresh car than uh, better tires later on. Exactly. I think he went maybe uh, two laps earlier than the rest of the, the field here, as we're seeing Eric Tavite, Matty Orban coming into the pits. So that was at, uh, uh, Sebastian Rosemeyer, I think we saw in a little earlier, or no, or the other DPG Motorsport car. Uh, obviously, they've got three here in Division One, but uh, Orban, Tavite, we have Carlos Ortiz coming in, Kevin Angwin coming in. So uh, we're seeing a lot. Wait, there's another DPG Motorsport car. So I guess it was Rosemeyer we saw a few laps ago going for his pit stop. And so now we're seeing uh, this is, seems to be prime pit window uh, a time here as one of the core racing drivers gets in who is that that's Darren Adams Darren Adams comes in 
pits from 17th position, so a lot of traffic through pit lane. Carlos Ortiz now is going to come out. Hopefully, these guys can sort this out. Looks like Ortiz is just going to slide in right behind Darren Adams, uh, <laughs> clean enough as these guys. I'm curious, and now going to the front of the field, when we're going to see these front runners now come into the pits. The first of the front runners to pit was Mr. Adrian Holm, who's now sitting there in 12th position. Uh, we're seeing here we have Rietfeld. He's going to, looks like, is he going for now that? No, he's yep. back into the pits. That he's pitting here. Uh, I'm curious what Talbrook's going to do behind him. This is going to be the critical move, and Talbrook falls him right in. So, THR, they're, they're on the precision strategy. Do not want to stay out longer on these tires, and it looks like it's going to be a status quo as the front. There is uh, Eunice Radio all coming in to the, the pits, these front runners. Uh, this Chris Butcher staying out. It's uh, no, that they all come in. So, yeah, John, it seems like uh, these guys have all coordinated with one another to get. Uh, everything done on the on, on on the same queue almost because these guys haven't really overtaken anyone in the, in this. Uh, well, I guess you had Ravio losing position to Talberg, but it seems very these guys are all in the same strategy almost. Yeah, definitely. It's like almost like you know it, it, I'll pit whenever the guy in front of me pits, and that seemed to happen. You know, maybe they're all following Rietveld because they believe he'll have the best strategy, and um, so maybe that's what they were doing. Maybe Rietveld pitted, and everyone just said, "Well, if Rietveld yeah, can pit yeah. now, well, that, maybe that's the best time for me to pit." But actually, looking at the entries, Tolbert got better entry to the pit lane than Rietveld. He slowed down slightly later, took more of a risk, and um, which is a bit um, strange because usually it's precision that nail the the entry and exits um, instead of THRs and Tolberg looks to have gained a little bit of time and um, not that it's going to matter too much if Rietveld keeps up his pace but I mean what we're saying about pit stops making a difference you know if you gain two seconds on an entry and an exit of the pit lane maybe three seconds on an in lap or an out lap if you were running two tenths a lap faster than driver behind for for um, 10 laps or 15 laps rather um, and then you lost that time in the pit every your 15 laps of, of, of pace would just be all wasted because all, all the time's gone so it just shows you how much of a difference you know the getting the pit lane entry you know the the in lap the entry the stop the exit and the out lap those five things just nailing all those five is, is vital and um, if you want to maintain maintain a gap to the driver behind yeah, that's it's, it's tremendously vital. We're seeing Adrian Holm, who went in earlier than than, than the rest of the front runners, so he obviously had a, a fresh uh, a, 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 a fresh set of rubber for a, a quick flying lap. Has now jumped Chris Butcher. Well, obviously, I think Chris just made the position on Holm because Holm went in early. But Holm assumes, I believe, a net fourth place here in ninth position. This is the guy who I wanted to watch, wanted to see if he got any time on Eunice Ravio. That gap sits at about three seconds. Uh, I, I, it's about down to about maybe even two point five seconds. So maybe uh, Home was really trying to undercut Ravio, but he's now going to have to really make up this time in this stint. We're seeing guys like Tristan Clyde. We're seeing uh, uh, Eric Tavai, David Yunt, uh, now uh, Lee Palmer, all having pitted. But actually, no, no, no we have a, a strong Brents uh, Palmer. They're coming into the pits here. Uh, we'll, we'll see how exactly come. I remember Lee Palmer. They just actually blipped in, I believe, a third position, so I mean, that's obviously the highest we've seen him all season, so he continues his good form this afternoon at Montreal. Adrian Holm, he now gets up to fifth position. I, uh, David Yunt now is the only guy who hasn't pitted. Uh, one of the, the, well, the, the biggest front runner that hasn't pitted. He's got about a 5.2 second gap on uh, Reef. But, but, I mean, uh, John, uh, David seems to always go very long on his stints. I mean, what, what, what's, the, what's the strategy behind that? I, th I think it's just you know doing something different to your opponents if you can't overtake them on track you're going to need to change up your strategy a bit and maybe you saw the other guys in the pits he thought right okay they're going to have cold tires on the route lap I can take advantage of this and he's going a bit longer and it also means he's going to have fresher tires later on in the race but of course it means he his tires also have to get up to temperature and um, he'll spend one more lap on, on worn tires so you know it could work it, it could not we don't really know the perfect lap to pit um, it looked like it was you know 16 or 17 would have been ideal um, but if David John can make this work you know he'll make it work and he's doing a great job he can now go to his team boss and say um, you know I, he, he can go to you know um, Tolberg and Ravio and say oh by the way I led this race and you didn't so <laughs> you know he, he'll, he'll always have that you know I led the V8 supercar race at Montreal and I mean it, I, it could be that you know it, it made, apart from the strategy if, if you're in a good battle with someone and you're trying to do something different it's also the pride of you know leading a lap you, you get you know you get noticed and um and he's done a, he's done a good in lap there david john a good entry to the pits and he will of course succumb the lead to the inevitable uh, race leader jeffrey rietfeld and um, who continues to really stroll away it looks like he is it looks like he's actually gained even more from jesper tolberg now the gap up to 8.8 .8 seconds so rietfeld really has nailed this last couple of laps since the pit stop and um, it's paid dividends. Sorry, sorry, it's just come back, back down to 4.8 through the next split. So um, take that back. Reetveld's lost time through the pits, um, yeah, which we, well, we saw him lose time in the entry. So yeah. 
Yeah, I think your initial assessment of it, John, where you th where you thought he lost some time to Talbert coming into the pitch, I think that was correct because now that gap's obviously down to four point uh, eight seconds. Uh, it was up to I think three point uh, six point three before the pitch. So Talbert has taken something out of Reitfeld's time. Now the question becomes, can Talbert? Uh, uh, find the pace within the race to now uh, uh, cut down on that time. Because uh, unlike his teammate Toby Davis, who's been out and out just tremendously quick this season, Talbert has uh, made up position through other drivers making mistakes, through Talbert being more consistent than those guys. He hasn't exactly set the world on fire with his pace, uh, but now is his time. He's got to really push this car, ring some pace out that machine. Otherwise, it seems that Reefel's going to pull right back away from the THR driver. So uh, it's now gone back to Talberg to uh, really step it out, on, uh, step it up on track. We have uh, Eunice Ravio there in uh, uh, third place with Adrian Holm assuming his fourth place position, which I think yeah, that's exactly where he went into the pit stalls uh, at. Uh, Eric Tavite is in fifth, so it looks like Tavite is now jump Butcher. Butcher is now three seconds behind Tavite. Remember, we saw Butcher put a move on Tavite uh, uh, during the first stint, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on with uh, Butcher's car. That car seemed very uh, uh, wobbly coming out of that uh, uh, final hairpin as he goes on the casino straight, but he's certainly not going to be happy to, about having a, now a three-second gap to Eric Tavite, who he already overtook for that fifth position, so uh, it looks like uh, Mr. Uh, Butcher's got to get his head on together, and his teammate actually right behind him and Kevin Brents. So THR uh, Red, they're doing very solid. I believe THR Red is only a few points up on Core Racing, so the, the fight is very much on between Core and THR Red for that position. Eric Strong there in 8th place with uh, Matthew Orban there in ninth. Remember, or Orban, I believe he started 7th uh, or 8th, is now down to ninth place, but he's still doing very solidly in this race. I think even uh, Orban got to six at one point, so he hasn't really moved up the grid, but to still be in the top ten, he's going to be happy about that. Uh, David Young rounds out the top ten. Remember, he was the last of uh, the drivers to pit, and that seemed to have done him pretty well. I think he was running 11th before the pit stops. I think behind his teammate, Tommy Ohala, but uh, it's, he, he's made he's made out well in those pit stops to get up to 10th. Lee Palmer continues his surge up the field now in the 11th position start at 22nd and Lee I, I must admit, I must I must say John he might be the most impressive driver I've seen this afternoon I mean just so uh, surprising driver I'll say because uh, Lee Palmer is not ha he's got a realistic chance at a top 10 position where this guy we haven't seen much of Lee so far this season uh, Carlos Ortiz there in 12th position uh, followed by Tommy Ohala obviously Tommy lost a few places because he had to swap that front bumper but he's, his car is back again on track, and it looks like he's going to be strong. Maybe he can get up to Ortiz, maybe get up to Lee Palmer and challenge for that top 10. Uh, Kevin Angwin there for DPG Motorsports there. And DPG, I think they're actually sixth in the team's championship, so these guys really need to get the most out of their results here today. Uh, Lars Brugman, oh, Lars, he had a spin that took him down, I think, even the 25th. So, uh, wow, John, he's up now to 15th position. That's very good for Mr. Brogman and uh, uh, Optimum Sim Racing. Uh, he's going to be very happy to recover uh, uh, from, from, from his drop early in the, in the race. And Darren Adams also dropped down with Lars, now up to 16. So very good for Core Racing and, the, and these drivers to get themselves back right at, and back going up the, the right direction up the field. Tristan Clark uh, is now 17th. I believe this is a high point for him in the race. Uh, I know earlier we saw him running in 19th, now up to 17th. Uh, Rob Taplin continues to move up the field. Remember, uh, Rob, I believe he started in the 20s somewhere, now up to 18th, and doing solidly. These drivers, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's timing uh, or that puts them a lap down. If they're actually a lap down, uh, uh, I think uh, it's a, I think it's a sector a sector thing. When they yeah, do yeah, cross yeah. the sector, we'll see. But some of these drivers are, of course, a lap down. And um, yeah. Yeah, and we have Rosemeyer here in 19th position, another DPG Motorsports driver. Uh, Jonathan Overclin for Optimum Sim Racing is actually fending off a little bit from Bruno Salsa Fiera. We've seen him with a, in a battle with, uh, uh, I believe, not Ethan Bass. There was another driver in this fight, not besides Kevin Enderman. Enderman, uh, who we're seeing in behind these guys, is not falling back a fair ways through the field. Remember, Enderman was up to 14th at one point. He's not going to be happy now to be in 22nd, but looks like uh, Salsa Fierra is right on the back of Oakland. We'll stay with this fight. We'll see if Oakland can, can actually hold off Fierra for this position. Uh, Fierra looks like he's the stronger of the two dr cars. Uh, I mean, where, where does he want to make this move happen, John? I mean, if you're Bruno Salsa here. 
Um, I think the, the the main overtaking place has got to be into the hairpin, and if you can't make it work into the hairpin, if maybe he's a bit too far back, he'll concentrate on the exit uh, and see if he can get a run into the chicane, but it's difficult to overtake there. Vera closes right in under braking, so he looks good under braking, he closes right in on Aukerklund, but that's going to compromise Ooh. his exit, and it has, and Aukerklund's got away, so the main overtaking chance for South of Ferreira would have been here, and maybe if he'd just taken his time a bit more, closed in instead of taking a risk, he would have maybe been able to dive at the, up the inside into this hairpin, but he's not going to do it this time, let's see if he can nail the exit. Ocker Clint runs a bit wide, he gets sideways, but so does South Ferreira, and that's a good exit from Ocker Clint. I don't think he's going to be able to make the move into the next chicane. Um, just speaking about the uh, pit stops, uh, it looked like the biggest loser of that was Tommy Oyala. Obviously, he had a bit of damage and came in earlier than everyone else, and it's dropped him down to 13th. Uh, it has to be said, the biggest gainer was Jesper Tolberg, up to second position. Um, as, oh, it looks like South Oculus run wide, South Ferreira. Oh! oh, that was close. And I'm afraid South Ferreira's lost some time there. Um, so that battle should resume in a, in a couple of corners' time. But um, yeah, the biggest gainer of that was Jesper Tolberg. And um, he gained the time on, on Rebuild. And I think what exactly what you were saying about Tolberg's consistency, you know, maybe he doesn't have the outright pace, you know, in qualifying. I mean, we saw that. His teammate, Yunus Ravio, beat him by four tenths in qualifying. But then it comes to the race, and suddenly Tolberg's almost ten seconds ahead of his teammate, and, you know, fighting for with a, with a strong chance of victory if there's any mistakes from Rebuild. So what you were saying is exactly right about, about Jesper Tolberg. Um, you know, it's just he's getting those consistencies, making up positions for other people struggling. And, and this event just proves it entirely. But with the next pit stop uh, window should be around about the lap 34 mark. Uh, it's a 47 lap race, so around lap 34, maybe slightly earlier, and we should see the next pit stops being made. So that's an 11 laps time. So we've got a little bit of on track running in the meantime. Yeah, these guys, the leaders, are just now getting to Ethan Bassett lapping. Uh, obviously, we felt has gone through on Ethan. Tarbert's going to be uh, at, uh, at uh, Ethan's bumper, and we got to assume another half lap or so. Uh, down the down, down the field a little bit uh, in this run, running order, the top 10, very spaced out. Butcher can't even close the gap to Eric to fight. He, obviously, Butcher was the quicker of the two drivers in the first stint, or maybe that might have been where Butcher... Uh, once the tires went a little bit, uh, the, the the fight came to Butcher a little bit more. It seems like Tavite's very strong as they open these stints. Uh, Kevin Brent's actually, Eric Strong was a lot closer than this to Brent's only a few corners ago. It's now dropped off. Uh, so, so Strong now um, having a little trouble not catching uh, Kevin Brent's and company. The thing about Kevin, and it, it should be said, I mean, I, I, I pointed this out, he's not too fond of the control tires, but has managed to do well nonetheless here this afternoon. Started 10th, now up to 7th position. One of the biggest gainers was in the top 10. So, uh, Kevin, I mean, the, here, here's a guy that's sitting fifth place overall in the driver's championship said uh, repeatedly that he doesn't really care about the driver's uh, title or where he sits in it he's just about going out there and getting solid results wants to win a race that's his goal for this championship but uh kevin i mean uh, solid solid even without the, the outright pace today he's been very very solid he's going to be i think you've got it it's fair to assume that he's going to be uh, uh, happy with his performance here today to take seventh with these control ties which he normally doesn't like uh driving one but uh continue to move down the field we have uh Mate orban there in ninth position and again things st even staying status quo here in midfield with lee palmer carlos ortiz and those guys so uh it, it seems like at, at the front tall break has now only lost about a second on Mr. Rietfeld, who's leading the event, obviously there, Talbrook now goes through on Ethan Bass to lap traffic. But Talbrook, at this point, he's got pretty much no reason, uh, no no reason to lose pace at this time because there's no other lap cars in front of him, not being challenged by anyone. The thing is, the, the, the same can be said about Rietfeld. So now it's just going to come down to pure lap pace between Rietfeld and Talbrook. As now that gap is what. Uh, six over over six seconds is that is that what i'm looking at here uh, john yeah ex exactly six seconds so um the gap is slightly increasing as we go along and i, I know you said the next we can expect the uh, the second around the stops around lap 33 lap 34 so uh remember the gap was about 6.3 seconds i believe uh, uh before the first cycle of stops and talbert cut that down to 4.8 but already that gap's back above six seconds so uh, even if Talbert can gain on Wheatfelt through the second set of stops, I, mean, I don't really think it's going to impact how this race is going to play out. I mean, uh, it seems that unless Talbert can get some more lap paces, it's pretty much Wheatfelt's 
to lose at this point. Uh, Yunus Ravio uh, continues to just uh, have a very lonely race here in third position. I know at the end of uh, the Watkins uh, Glen GP, he said that was a very boring race for himself. I, obviously, he finished second, wasn't challenged by anyone, couldn't get close enough to Rietveld to really challenge him for that first position. So, again, Ravio having a very uh, uh, lonely race there in uh, third position. But, hey, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, John, a lonely race on the podium is still a race on the podium. You know exactly. You'd rather you know you'd, you'd rather um, you know run away with a third place than be in a fantastic battle for for thirty third place. And um, it has to be said, you know, that come the end of a race. Oh, as we see Whoa. that Ethan, Ethan Bass crashing just in front of Ravio, so got away with that one. But yeah, I mean, as as I was saying, you know, at the end of the race, you, you know, sometimes you can say, oh, that was a great fun race, and and it will have been, but you'll be still disappointed at your result. Whereas if you know you pick up a third position, who cares if it's lonely? You, you exit the race feeling, you know, I'm delighted. I picked up a third place in the Touring Pro Series Virtual V8 Supercar Championship, one of the most prestigious leagues in sim racing, and you know that that's fantastic for for Ravio at the minute. And I think Tolberg, speaking of the the top three, as Ethan Pass almost crashes again, having a bit of a nightmare here today. But yeah, Tolberg at the moment. He's saying, you know, okay, I'm, I'm doing the best I job I can. I'm, I've got race pace that I can't match you, Jeffrey, but I'm, I'm making it up where I can, which is, in Tolberg's case, in the pit stops. And, um, you know, I'm making up as much time as I can. I'm doing the job I can. And he's basically saying, you know, I'm handing it over to you. It's your decision whether you, you are going to bend this or not. You know, Tolberg, Tolberg's doing his job. He's, uh, he's closing in where he can, but he knows he doesn't have the outright pace to beat Jeffrey. So he's basically saying, you know, Jeffrey, it's, it, your pressure's on you. You know, it's, it's you that's, that's you know, is, is your race to lose at the moment. And, you know, that pressure can definitely get to drivers. And Tolberg's just sitting in there doing his best job he possibly can. And, um, you know, this race, this race definitely isn't over. Yeah, and, and that's a very good point to make, John, because uh, Jeffrey Reed thought we saw an absolute horrendous mistake at Simmons Plains when he absolutely goes off when he had that race all, uh, sealed and in the bag, but went off, actually took damage, wound up finishing fourth. And then again at uh, uh, Adelaide, it wasn't so much his fault. It had a, had a bit of contact with Toby Davis, who, which uh, later resulted in Reed felt losing pace in his car and losing the race uh, to his teammate uh, Simon Kilo. So, I mean, Reed felt he's known for making uh, some mistakes while leading these events. So, uh, it's, it's certainly not completely wrapped up here at, uh, until we get to the final few laps or even to the final lap because Reed has been known to make those slight mistakes while leading the race. But it, regardless, Reed felt within a similar position last round at Watkins that it completely closed out the race clinically. So, Reed Feld is still is the guy on form now having a seven second gap to Tallbreak. And I believe that's the largest gap he's had in this entire uh, race today. So it's about to get to Bruno Sasa Fiera. And that's actually right on board with Bruno very quickly because Bruno, uh, actually, no, that's we're still on board there with Reed Feld. Let's go to Bruno here, who's at the back. Uh, the, the thing about Bruno, he's gotten around uh, Jonathan Okerklintz there for 20th position. So, and Okerklintz has actually gotten passed by Kevin Enderman. As now, let's see if uh, 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 Bruno's going to allow Reefeld to go through. And he does. That's very gentleman stuff from uh, uh, Bruno Salsafiero to let the leaders go through. He's not really under pressure anymore from Enderman and Okerklintz. So, he just lets the leaders go through. Uh, very sporting stuff from 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 uh, South Africa. That's very good to see. Meanwhile, Enderman has gotten around Jonathan Okerklint there for 21st position. Uh, then let's move up uh, up the field a little bit more. So look at the running order. At Lars, uh, uh, rather Rob Taplin there. Actually, Rob was up to. Uh, no, no, he stayed in 19th place. Rather, I'm I'm getting confused. I thought it was somewhere, but it looks like uh, Tristan Clark and Matty Orban have swapped positions or. No, 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 just a s s slight glitch in the timing. I'm sorry about that. It was uh, Sebastian Rosemar behind Tristan Clark there for 17th. Moving up, we have Darren Adams, who continues to trail Lars Brubman. Remember, these guys were in that opening lap uh, 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 scuffle with uh, Matt, Matt Richards that saw them take a slide down the grid. So it's great to see them back up and running within the, just outside the top 15 or just inside the top 15 if you're Lars Brubman. Uh, Kevin, and, uh, Kevin Hagwin there sitting in 14th position. That's going to be a very solid result again for him in DPG Motorsports. Across Ortiz has yet to really been able to, he's not been able to get up get to Tommy O'Hala and O'Hala's actually passed Ortiz rather I should say. O'Hala fell to 13th after that first cycle of pit stops gone through against Carlos Ortiz is now going to try to close in on Lee Palmer but Lee is quite a, he's got a quite a bit of a gap up the road to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Tommy O'Hala, so he's going to try to hold on to his position. The thing about Lee, though, he had a great start 
to this event to get up to 13th, but it seems like now this guy right here, David Young, has managed to hold the gap in 10th place. So, I, I mean, if you're Lee, what, what are you thinking, uh, 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 John? Do you think he's going to really try to push to go after David Young, or do you think he's going to be content with holding on to that 11th position? I mean, uh, okay, put yourself in Lee Palmer's position. You've qualified in 22nd position. You've been struggling with a setup all week. You've really got nothing to lose, and he's made such a good start to this race. You know, he's just he's just sitting there thinking, you know, I'm, I'm riding in 11th. You know, I can see a top 10 in my distance. I, you know, I, I know I've got good pace in this race. I'm feeling confident. I've got a big gap behind me, uh, and I'm I'm in, uh, you know I'm here for the fun. I'm not here, you know, I'm not going to win the race. But you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna push for this position. There's no point, you know, sitting back and settling for 11th. There's no satisfaction, and um, you know, you can't just say, oh, you know, I drove a consistent race. I was just aiming to get my 11th position sealed. You know, that's that's not what you want to be doing. You want to be really fighting for those top 10 positions. And he's not far behind David Jun. And um, he definitely has the pace to catch David. I mean, David is definitely no slouch in the THR blue car, but um, neither, of course, is Lee Palmer. And the way his race is going, he must be, you know, riding. He just needs to ride, ride on his, you know, ride on his momentum, if you like. And you know, he can see David Jun in the in the distance. He'll just keep on pressing, doing as, as fast race laps as he can without without incident. And um, you know, you know what the heck? Go for the go for the top ten position um, that you deserve. And if it all ends badly, you know you still enjoyed the race. It's a shame it didn't, but you know these things can happen, and it's a risk that drivers need to take if they, you know, they want to do well. And um, sorry, just talking. Matt Richards has just been talking to me, and um, he was actually been struggling with uh, overheating in, the, in his room on his um, on his computer and it, basically his hardware. So um, it breaks included. So that's a real shame for Matt Richards because um, his practice time would have put him six on the grid. Um, and uh, also saying, you know, the the lap one incident, um, you know, it wasn't really, it wasn't just down to Matt Richards. It looks like there was just, you know, different breaking points between the two of them. So, um, yeah, it's it's a real shame for him. But um, I'm sure you can, I'm sure you can rebound for the next round, Matt. So enjoy the broadcast while it's on. Um, and another man will be enjoying this one is Jeffrey Reitveld, just absolutely flying away at the front of this field, and um, still setting great. I mean, I mean, still setting fantastic laps. Um, it has to be said, 8.3 seconds ahead of Jesper, it's just growing and growing, Jeffrey's got it all under control, and he just needs to keep it out of the wall, and um, he'll, he'll be on there, but of course, if we say keep it out of the wall, look at all these all these previous, you know, in Formula 1 for example, who who crashed into the wall of champions two years ago, Sebastian Vettel, who was leading the championship, yep, and yep. you know, Michael Schumacher in 99 crashed into the wall, and that's basically what gave it its name, so you know, Reitveld leading this race, leading the championship, is it's almost set up. Um, for for a crash into the world <laughs> champion, so um, you know we don't want to put a curse on him, but yeah, um, John keep out the wall, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've done that I've done that so many times in these broadcasts. I did it to Matt in this one. I did I did it to um, uh, Van der Van der Veld in the last in the last event of minis. So I'm sorry, Jeffrey, um, for what's about to happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're actually just catching this battle between Adrian Holm and Eric Tavite. You know I've I've watched this the, the past uh, few laps, and uh, Tavite is really uh, uh, hone in on Adrian Holm. And the thing about uh, a home and, and to fight, remember, a home used to drive for ice cold racing until uh, last round where he switched to lazy man racing for Watkins Glen, uh, for the Watkins Glen GP. So uh, now, now maybe to has got a little something extra to go after Adrian Home and then pass him because not only did Home switch teams to lazy man racing, he also beat every ice cold driver in the field at Watkins Glen, and that certainly didn't make Eric to fight a happy camper. So now he's maybe trying to go after Adrian Home, get this position, and show, hey, you know. You might be with a, a new team, but uh, the better team is Ice Cold Racing. So, uh, I mean, what, what do you think, John? Do you think uh, Tavite's got it in him to get around this lazy man racing machine uh, of Adrian Holm? Uh, uh, definitely. I mean, Adrian Holm's got it. I mean, if Adrian Holm, if these guys swap positions, you know, you say Adrian Holm had it in him. These guys, uh, they're, they're great rivals. Of course, they were teammates, and there's obviously been a, a split there, but that, you know, that could be down to a, a number of reasons. You know, it doesn't mean there's any bad blood whatsoever right, between right. the two. And because they've switched teams, that just makes the rivalry even more fun, if you like. You know, now you've got, okay, Adrian says, I'm in a new team and I'm beating you, and Eric says, no, I want to show you that my team is the place you should have been. And, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's, it, I mean, it, these guys will be having a fantastic battle. It's not for the champion. Championship. They're doing well in the championship, but you know it's not for a championship. It's for you know a top four position, and I reckon this battle is going to develop into a great one. These drivers will be loving what's happening right now, and we of course know how capable Holm is with his you know third position in the first round. And oh, he's just run a bit wide there, so I'll maybe put another curse on him. And to fight down the inside, but um, yeah, as they run side by side in the back stretch, there's more contact between the two. This is great stuff here, as long as it doesn't end in the wall. And to fight takes the position, so a great move from Eric. And we of course know. How strong a driver Eric Tveit is after his WTM performance last season, taking three wins and second in the championship. 
as he home looks down the inside and they both go into the pits. Oh and, wow! <laughs> oh, that was a bit. Oh, there's contact in the pits. They've almost stopped. So let's see. This is almost like you know you see this in real life. You've got two cars following each other so closely in the pits. Adrian almost bump drafting to bite down the pit lane. Um, so <laughs> this is going to be incredibly exciting to see whose whose virtual pit crew can do a better job because of course our factor is not you know you don't, not everyone has exactly the same pit time. So let's see if Ice Cold or Adrian Holmes' new team can do a better job in the pits. This is exciting stuff. They both oh, go into tight. the pit garages, which are right next to each other. Holm gets stopped nicely, as does Tavite. And it's going to be Holm's going to leave just before Tavite, but Tavite is, of course, ahead. So here goes Holm, filling up his car now. And it's lap 31, so it's a couple of laps earlier. And oh, there's a contact. He's got in the one pits. Butcher, wow! And Butcher they go either side of Butcher. Wow, that was absolutely awesome. Remember, Butcher, he also pitted with these guys, kind of threaded the needle there, and then those guys had to go around him. But it looks like Tavite's actually going to make out in front of home. I was absolutely certain, John, that uh, Tavite was going to hit Butcher and lose out the home. But a tremendous bit of driving for, for Tavite to hold on to that net fourth position there. Very well yeah. done. Great stuff from those two drivers, just showing you know, that's what some race is all about. They had a great battle, and then they headed into the pits, almost bumping each other into the pits. They had a great battle in the pit lane, Tavite taking avoiding action, and then look at them now. They've exited the pit lane, the adrenaline's still pumping, and they're having a great battle as Oyala makes his second stop. So, yeah, we're about right with the pit call. It looks like the earliest stop's coming a couple of laps before lap 34, so that was that was about right. And um, Home, home will be just be looking to get that position back from Tavite because this is a net fourth place these guys have got. They're the leading cars that have made a stop as Eunice Ravio pits now. So the man in third position, if we can jump to him, is enter the pit lane. Uh, he's taking four tires, of course, because of, these tires do wear um, quite badly, um, which is, of course, what helps Jeffrey Reitveld because he's absolutely phenomenal on his tires uh, and obviously phenomenal pace-wise as well. So Ravio leaves the pits then, an 11.3 second stop. It's, it's excruciating for a driver, driving down the pit lane as slow as that and as long as it is. You're just thinking, you know, everyone else on the track is travelling, you know, plus 100 mile an hour, and I'm heading down here at about 5, at what it feels like 5 <laughs> anyway, and you just have to, you just cannot wait to get over that line, and, you know, in over eagerness, some drivers can get a drive through for it, and, um, yeah, ra it, it's so frustrating as a driver to be trundling down the pit lane that, that slowly, and um, it really is frustrating, but, of course, all the drivers have to do it, so it's a fair, fair playing field. Yeah, well, he was actually uh, holding the third position for quite a bit, uh, even after uh, the, the crew perform performed a stop. But finally, it looked like Kevin Brent and Eric Strong went through the uh, uh, demo, uh, Jan uh, Jonas, Jonas Rabio down to fifth position. But obviously, Brent and Strong uh, have yet to pit, so these guys are still in a battle. It looks like the two battles within the top ten are Strong versus uh, Brent and obviously Home versus Wright. And no, it looks like... Uh, uh, oh, past him, gotten, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's gotten right back around Mr. Eric Tavite. It's a shame we missed that, but these guys are still lying the stern, fighting for this position. These guys, right at the same uh, uh, pace levels, but it all depends now who can get uh, their car position in the in, into the right corner, so to speak, to get this position. Uh, and uh, then there's also, I think what's going on is that uh, home is strong at the start of these stints, obviously having a little bit more pace on Tavite, but Tavite has some better tire management and is able to really give home trouble later on in these stints. And now it's it should be said that these guys have to now go very long on this final stint uh, uh, for, for this race here today because these guys both went in earlier than the leaders and I actually let's actually update you on the leaders real very quickly as uh, Rita is not exiting his pit uh, pit stall as he put his pit in with uh, Jasper Tauber. I'm curious how this gap is looking as these guys come come out here. I think it was about eight point uh, eight seconds, but right now it looks like. Six seconds, but no, that's not exactly updated yet. We'll see. We'll know in a, about a half a lap what that gap is between Tallberg and uh, uh, the Reaper. But it looks well, look Ravio. Ravio's had a drive-through. It looks like he's back in the pits again, and, and just as exactly what I was oh. talking about. You're driving down the pit lane that slowly, and over eagerness, you're going to lift off the speed limiter. And you know, I said that in a you know, I said that in a way that you know some drivers will do it. And the man we were watching at the time actually has gone and done exactly what we were talking about and Ravio that will be so painful for him he was having such a good race a great qualifying running third in this event and um, absolutely phenomenal stuff and he's and he's gone and blown it and it can't be anything but driver error you know there's you know the R factor has nothing to do it's, it's your decision you're meant to get slowed down you you put on the pit lane limiter and you wait to the line so it looks like it's just a misjudgment from Ravio and that is absolute killer because he's lost the positions to Holm, to Vite and Butcher who've all gone past and also I've just noticed that Tolberg once again has gained the time in the pit so you know he's just proving his point you know he's doing everything he can and it's just he's put it in the hands of Rietveld whether he wants to throw it away or take the win.
Yeah, I mean, uh, you're right there, John. I think he took about maybe even two seconds off of Riefeld's uh, 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 time there. He's got these cars in front of him, Kevin Brent and Strawn, who have yet to pit. You've got to assume that they're going to pit here as these guys are now coming to uh, uh, the end of this lap. I'm pretty sure these guys are going to duck into the pits now, but uh, so therefore they shouldn't hold up Talbert too much. But uh, Talbert, very good with his pit, but no, these guys stay out just as they say that. Uh, Brent stays out, and I believe Strawn's going to... No, Strawn is in, so that helps Talbert. Talbert now assumes third position. A uh, very much a, a shame there for Eunice Radio falling to eighth place like that. I think the last drive we saw that, that they had a critical drive through penalty like that was actually another THR car in Toby Davis, who had, a, I believe, an error like that at the Melvin, if I remember correctly. But we've seen some other drivers also struggle with the, the pit lane uh, a speed limit throughout the course of the season, but not too much at this front of the field like that. But a very, very much a shame there for Ravio. Obviously, he was pegged for a podium position. Uh, position. Now he's going to have, it's going to be a question mark if he can get back inside the top five. But uh, Strawn, obviously, he was into the pits. That's going to, so therefore, Ravio should be able to make up that position on him. Uh, Kevin Brent's in second position. Obviously, Kevin is yet to pit. Adrian Holm is now going to pick up a net third place. And let's actually pick up on that battle between Holm and Tavite, as you guys can see. Oh, oh wow, wow. Tavite has a bit of a squirrely moment on the exit of that corner. It goes over to the curb there and almost hits the wall. But, but he's still riding the back of home, and home cannot like this. When you're in that podium, you kind of just want it to be nice and easy, take a podium position, fight next round. But looks like Tavite's not going to have any of it once that podium position for his, for itself. So with, with uh, at least enough, with another stint still in play here, this can go either way uh, as these drivers scrap to get on the podium position. And, you know, despite the race starting out kind of flat at the front, it's starting to pick up. We're seeing mistakes by some of these drivers. And now, obviously, we're getting these scraps uh, within the top ten. You know, it should be, I, I do want to point out that uh, Kevin Brent's staying out of lap, uh, uh, as opposed to the guy who's fighting with Eric, Eric Strong, that's that could hurt Kevin, because uh, obviously Eric's not going to be on those. Uh, uh, he's he's going to be on a fresher set of tires, and I think that's Kevin. Is that Kevin now peeling into the pits? In the distance, no. Kevin stays. Oh, he's staying up. Oh yeah, John. I think that's going to hurt him. I think Strong pretty much got that position taken from Kevin because you lose a ton of time to a driver with fresh tires. So I mean, really, what what's Kevin thinking out there? I think it, I mean it's similar to what we saw earlier. You know, he he thinks you know he can stretch out. Maybe he's he's been conserving his tires. And you know, we saw Kevin pick reasonably late. He's going to let his teammate by, and that's going to well, I think he's going to let his teammate by anyway. If not, it's going to oh, that's going to hurt. He's he's really Ooh. is hurting Jeffrey. Uh, sorry, Jesper Tolberg. He's helping Jeffrey, but he really is hurting his teammate's time here. He's he's holding him up. But yeah, I'm not sure really what Kevin's thinking. Maybe he has you know fresher tires than everyone else. And also. You know, when he does pit, you've got Strat Strat running out there on cooler tires, and when Brent does pit, he's going to have, you know, for the, for the entirety of, of the remainder of this race, Brent is going to have two laps fresher tires than Strand, and maybe he thinks that could make a difference, but no, it's not, you know, looking at it from our point of view, it's not the kind of thing you'd do. Um, I just wanted, to, you know, just wanted to give a, an opinion on the Eric Tavite um, home situation, you know, if you're sitting in Eric Tavite's position, you know, if you're using your head, the clever thing to do would, you know, just drive around, get as close to home as you can, but conserve your tires, sit in the slipstream, because it will help on the straights and then make a move towards the end but Arctivite is a sim racer and sim racers see a car in front they say oh I'm as fast as him I'm going to try and overtake him and that's that's all they're going to think about and okay maybe it might not work in the long term but you know the whole point of sim racing it's great fun and you want to try and make up as many positions as possible and overtaking is a big part of that so Tavite will be going flat out to try and beat home in this race as he Brent finally pits. Yeah, he's lost a little bit of uh, a position there to uh, Adrian Holm. Or, or yeah, Savite does lose some time to Adrian Holm. But, yeah, Brent goes into the pits. I'm curious now where, where Strawn factors into all this. Can he get past Brent? I've got to assume that he's going to get past Brent with a bit of a gap even as uh, Holm, uh, Savite goes through. I think Butcher's about to go through. Where is Butcher? Butcher does go through. Uh, Butcher in... Where is Kevin? Where is uh, Ravio and Strawn? They actually just exited the wall of champions. So what? Is 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 Brent's going to get through here? This I'm could sure. work, you know, because they because um Strawn's got to take the first chicane and Kevin yeah. doesn't. And Kevin's already out of the pit limit. And you know what? He's going to be he's he is going to 
It's going to be so close. That's, I can't tell until we see. And he does. He manages to stay in front of Eric Spann somehow. And, and that's exactly what we were saying about his tyre conserving. And now he's got fresh retires for the for the rest of the race than Eric. So if uh, we were busy doubting, you know, Kevin Brent's decision, he obviously knows much better than us, which is why he's out there and we're and we're in here talking to you guys. But um, <laughs> yeah, he, Ke Kevin's pro pro proved us wrong there. So I am um, I grant you well done, Kevin Brent. Um, using his head more than us and he's managed to make that work and now he's got fresher tires and he couldn't have done it much better could he Danny? Yeah talk about really knowing your strategy knowing your car I mean we, meanwhile we were kept we were questioning Kevin the whole the, the whole uh, uh, time there and meanwhile Kevin even given a position and slowing down to his teammate Jasper Tallbreak still manages to hold off Eric Strong and now we've got to assume that Kevin's going to take this position because like you were saying John he's going to have the fresher tires for the duration of this uh, event as now here's our leader Jeffrey Reefa just set the fastest time of the event now it's pretty much just going to go for the absolute kill job on this one trying to completely shut the door on Tauber but again he's got to watch himself pushing because with a 9.2 second gap you really don't need to push for that much I mean there's definitely more to lose than there is to gain at this point but uh, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break before we uh, uh, finish out this race here obviously ha having done this, uh, the first two pit stops the only two pit stops to this event uh, we're going to go to this quick commercial break and we'll be back just after this. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing. Puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. All right, welcome back to the action here. Uh, after our quick, uh, just a quick word from our sponsors, we are now picking it up with uh, Jeffrey Wheatfield here as he continues to lead the, the lead the event here. Uh, you know, it should have been said, we, we actually forgot we are missing Florian Strauss, one of the major players in the virtual V8 Supercars world. He's sitting in 14th and overall in the, in the Drivers' Championship, but uh, Strauss has been very good as of late. I think he took, uh, a, it's not a podium position, I think fourth or fifth last round at Watkins Glen, so it's a bit unfortunate that we've uh, lost him, but uh, Andrew Warren, we've also uh, I know, I know, John. You wanted to say a quick few words about him. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's not racing in the V8s, but of course had a big crash in in real life racing. Um, well, and I think he actually still got a podium position even when he crossed the line upside down, um, which is pretty much the only consolation he can take. But he um, he did get um, you know he got badly shaken up and uh, he's just you know keep taking it easy at the moment and he's definitely recovering and will be back hopefully racing in Touring Pro Series before too long. So just like to wish him a speedy recovery and I know he, I know he's doing a good job so far. And if you watch the news, uh, Global News, I think it was to uh, Toronto um, news. He was actually featured on it with with the crash and you know how his how his um, friends and fellow racers help drag him out and uh, yeah it's um, it's it's good to see that he's okay it was a big crash and um, just to say the whole of TPS is hoping you get back uh, fit for racing as soon as possible yeah I, I think it was absolutely remarkable how the drivers I mean if you've seen the video these guys actually stopped during the race get out their cars and flip Andrews a car over and save the guy while he's uh, trapped pinned underneath his car I think it's absolutely uh, tremendous what those guys did and you know t Andrew's actually so incapacitated actually in the hospital through that actually had his friend log on to his account within uh, uh, the inside sim racing forums to post to inform the TPS crew that the guy was you know out of action and about the whole crash so Andrew obviously in bad shape through all that but uh, I mean uh, God willingly he's okay now and like, like John was saying we'll expect him to see him 
back out on the Touring Pro Series uh, circuit sooner rather than later. So if that's, that's also that's always great to hear. Uh, back to the race here. Obviously, Reefa continues to lead. I, I want to pick up with this home and to fight battle as these guys continue to go at it here, John. 33 seconds behind the leader, but this this fight for podium position is well and truly on. Uh, to fight continues to hamper uh, Adrian Holm, and I, I thought, I mean, when, when we cut to break, it looked like uh, Holm had about a second and a half gap, or at least a second to Eric Tavite, but Tavite has closed that right back up now. He's right behind Adrian Holm, ice cold racing against uh, Lazy Man Racing uh, for this final podium spot. This is this, this is a highly coveted spot within within TPS is one of their strongest leagues. So. Oh, contact! Oh, yeah. It looks like uh, Tavite overcooked it a little bit on the brakes, but looks like it looks like these guys make it through a okay. Uh, again, I mean, to fight, like you were saying, John, uh, he's going to look for a gap if he sees one, but it looks like uh, Adrian Holm is defending uh, very well so far. Yeah, definitely. He's doing a, he's doing a great job out there, uh, is Adrian Holm. This, of course, not for fourth position anymore. It's for an even po more important podium position, thanks to Ravio's mistake in the pit lane. So, um, yeah, this is definitely big big honor going up for grabs here. I mean, if you get third position, you get a podium. It goes down in GP cost. You get a third place trophy. And, of course, you get more points. So third position is definitely one you want to be in. And fourth, obviously, you take fourth position. But if you had a shot at third or getting on the podium, um, you, you would be absolutely delighted. And these guys, absolutely great rivals and um, good friends. So I, I'm sure this is this is one of these battles. It's been going on for such a long time now, and it's for you know such a prestigious position. We've seen so many changes. It's the kind of battle that you know um, Eric. I'll jump down after this race, and the team speaks, talk to Adrian, and just say you know thank you for an amazing battle. And you know it's just it's just a, it's a fantastic community. Of course, here at Tour and Pro Series, you've got all these guys. You've got fierce rivalry at the same time. You've got you know great great friends battling you know, battling out against each other in, in fantastic sim races. You know with, with the and we've got which we've got the privilege of broadcasting for, uh, to show you all you guys as well. So um, yeah, just, a, just an absolutely fantastic battle going on here, and it really is what some racing is all about. Yeah, and these guys got to watch themselves. So you're getting Rob Taplin and Bruno Salsa Ferreira in front of those guys. Obviously, those those those, those drivers in front are lapped down as to fight trying to duck that nose around on Adrian Home. Mate, perhaps unnerve him a little bit. He gets alongside into the hairpin. This is Tavite's chance. Can he get the run here on Casino Straight? Let's see if he can now pull up to Mr. Adrian Home. Can he get in that slipstream? We're seeing maybe the slipstream effect isn't as big as it would be in some other cars. But let's see if Tavite can get up to him. Here we, here we go. Here's the run. Going to the final hairpin. He's going to try to tuck that inside. Still not close enough. Could not get the overlap. Adrian Home looks at the fan as these guys go, go over those huge curves as he ran out to the wall at Champions. I do want to update the viewers on uh, a little uh, further behind us. We have Kevin Brents losing position here to Eric Strawn. Somehow Strawn gets around Kevin Brents through the commercial break to take that seventh position, which really doesn't make any uh, any uh, sense when you look at it technically because uh, obviously Kevin Brents had the, sh had the uh, fresher tires, had a gap to Strawn, but uh, to Strawn just wouldn't be denied, takes that sixth position, taking a, a final run through to get rid Matty Orb and continues to hold ninth position up for DPG Motorsports. He's going to be very happy with that. Uh, to, uh, David Young uh, continues again to hold 10th position. Uh, that's a lap car behind uh, Okerklins there, uh, but here we have Tommy O'Halley gets uh, finally catches up Lee Palmer and passes Lee Palmer for 11th position. Just showing how strong the O'Halley's car has been uh, uh, through this race. I remember I think he had like a six second gap to Lee Palmer at one point, but he cuts that to take the position. Uh, Lee Palmer there in 12th position, a tremendous result for the ice cold racing driver so far. He's going to be absolutely through the moon to finish 12th in this uh, event today if he can just hold on uh, to what he's got so far. We have a Carlos Ortiz not too far behind that fight there in 13th position. Remember, Ortiz was all over the place at Watkins Glen, has managed to really get together and be more consistent here today in 13th position. He's going to be tremendously thrilled with that as I believe he was started as a Division 2 driver, so to finish at 13th, that would be great, but he does have to hold off this man here in 14th place, Kevin Agwin for DPG Motorsports, has been tremendously strong here today, uh, it needs to be said for Kevin, has man managed to weather the storm in midfield, and so far he's sitting in 14th position, solid job from Mr. Agwin here uh, this afternoon. Uh, at, at the front, I, do, I, might, I want to make a quick update to the home and to Vite battle, it seems like to Vite made a mistake to drop three seconds behind Adrian Holmes, so that seems to have cooled down there at the front. We have Lars Brugman here in 15th position. I think 
he finished 14th at Watkins Glen. So again, another strong result for the Optimum Sim Racing driver with Darren Adams behind him for Core Racing in 16th. Uh, core Racing, obviously these guys are fourth in the Constructors Championship. 16th position is not going to do tremendously well for this team today, especially considering they lost Heinz Petzold er very early in this event, and Heinz is kind of their star driver in virtual V8 at the moment. But uh, regardless, Darren Adams has done well to make his way up the grid. I think he fell down to 24th even at the start of the race, so solid result. Solid job by Darren Adams. Uh, Tristan Clark there in 17th position for, uh, for uh, Optimum Sim Racing. It's pretty much been there for the majority of this race today. Uh, Sebastian Rosemeyer there at 18th for DB, the final DPG Motorsport car in the event. Uh, Rob Taplin there at 19th position has uh, held that position for quite a while. As he, as now you're seeing uh, Adrian Holm that is uh, just tucked in behind him. Obviously Adrian trying to put... Uh, I obviously rob a lap down and Adrian's going to try to go through very shortly here. Uh, Bruno Sassafiera, very solid job for, from Bruno today. Has gotten, uh, gotten out the way of the lead cars, has not really made uh, that much improvement up the grid in his own uh, race efforts, but has been I mean, very solid. I've been very uh, uh, impressed by, you know, the, 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 the professional driving I've seen from Bruno today. I mean, not obviously the pace is lacking, but Bruno, he's got, he's got, he, he, the race crack is there. So that's the first ingredient you need to be a good driver. Uh, as, I, as you're seeing up ahead, uh, Rob Chapman and allows uh, Mr. Adrian Holm, or Eric Tavite rather, to go through. So that, again, very sporting contact we've seen, a very sporting uh, uh, behavior we've seen from the lap traffic to today. I, I, obviously, what we saw some horrendous stuff at Adelaide, so it's great to see these guys, you know, get this under control here at the, the sixth round of championship. Uh, that's Kevin Enderman, who's been up and down today with uh, Jonathan Okerklint there in 22nd position. Rounding out the field is Ethan Bass in 23rd. Uh, and we have Andy Johns, who DNF with Matt Richards, uh, and finally Heinz Petzl. So let's actually now run on board with the front runners, as here we have Jeffrey Rietfeld just taking us through our final laps here today. Uh, Adrian Holm continues to hold off from uh, uh, Eric Tavite and company. So, I, I mean, John. What, what, do you make, what do you make of this race? I mean, we've seen, obviously, Rietfeld continue to be dominant on these control tires, but, uh, I, I mean, what, what's your take on, on, on things today? Do you see that any, do you feel that any of these other drivers are going to be able to someday challenge Rietfeld on these control tires, or is this pretty much Rietfeld's game and no one else is able to play it? I mean, of course, there's obviously going to be, you know, the, the absolute ultimate pace that anyone can possibly have. Because of course all cars have limits. They can't just, you know, you can't just go flat out around the corners. And <laughs> um, so, you know, obvi obviously Rietveld is is very close to the limit of what's possible, you know, in these cars at the moment. And no other driver seems to be close enough. So it's definitely possible. You know, it's it's much it's much easier to improve um, when you're when you're further away from the ultimate pace um, and you're further away from the perfect setup. And um, it's easier to improve. You know, Rietveld's got to a stage now where I mean it's going to be so difficult for him to improve. Whereas Tolberg, you can clearly see. Um, you know, running maybe a couple of tenths a lap slower, there's a couple of tenths that, you could, that, that is possible to improve. So, you know, I mean, it can only get closer at the, at the front. But on these controlled tires, Rietveld is absolutely phenomenal. It looks like in the, on the other tires, you know, he, he, he kind of just falls back into that, into that top four battle. It's usually between the two precision cars of um, Rietveld and Kilov, who's not here. And then you've got the two THR orange cars of uh, Tolberg and Davis, who's also not here. And just quickly like to wish him great luck in Super Karts this weekend at Silverstone. Uh, but yeah, it's the, it seems like as soon as they, these cars get on these control tires, Rietveld just absolutely he, he just it's almost like they were designed perfectly for him he's absolutely yeah. phenomenal there's, there's words cannot describe you know how much he is dominating on on these control tires and it i mean it doesn't make sense to you or me but it's just he, he you know he's just an incredible sim racer and that's why he's in a team and um, you know that that's that's why um, he, he's doing so well he's got he's got the backing from a from a phenomenal team and um, you've got you know the guys like jack keithley um, you know, uh, right at the top, right at the top, you've got Bono Weiss from um, Formula Sim Racing. You know, dominating over there, and it's just you know one, one of the top teams, and it's, it's definitely showing. You know, Rietveld's joined joined one of the top teams because he's clearly one of the best drivers, and you know the two together have just been absolutely phenomenal. And um, on the, on these, as as I've said, on these control tires, he's just absolutely phenomenal stuff by Rietveld. I mean, we saw him set the fastest lap and the lap. I think it was 30, 32 or 30, um, sorry, 37 or 38. Yeah, yeah. So, so 38 laps into the race, he's done a, a fast, a lap. It was fast enough to put him third on the grid. And, you know, it's just absolutely unbelievable. And, um, 
yeah, just just really showing why he's on top of the championship. And and if 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 he keeps on going the way he is, you know, if he doesn't have a, you know, if his if his wheel doesn't break or his uh, his computer doesn't stop working, then you can't really see anyone else taking away the championship from him. Even if he doesn't win all the races on the on the other tires, as soon as he jumps in these control tires, he, he just seems to dominate. Yeah, I mean, while, while Reflux seem, uh, you know, mortal in, 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 on the sprint tires and the control tires, it just seems uh, like he's the de facto number one driver as Reflux continues to dominate this race. He's going to take his third race win of the season. Uh, Re Re Reflux, I mean, just absolutely, again, not enough superlatives to really describe how good he's been uh, this championship so far, but I do want to update our viewers very quickly on what's going on behind. Obviously, Adrian Holm has held off air to Vite, has really uh, uh, staved off that challenge from the the, the young uh, uh, to Vite. But th this battle here, Yunus Rabio has now quietly held sixth position, but he's in this. He's not really in a fight here. With, with the, 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 this is just lap traffic he's trying to get through. But these lap traffic guys, uh, they are in a fight. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, Yunus Rabio is only a few seconds off of Chris Butcher as there's the lights being flashed there as, as, as Rabio tries to go around. Here, I don't think he's gonna have enough time to get the butcher there, but there definitely is a chance that he can now challenge for that top five. Remember, Rabia was your, was on your podium, but a, a drive-through penalty cost him big time, and now he's falling back to sixth position. Uh, Kevin Brent has caught up to uh, uh, Eric Strawn just a little bit, but I don't think again, I don't think he's gonna be close enough to get this move done here. As the as we are on the final few laps of this event here. Uh, again, Kevin Brent, he, he lost out too to fight, uh, not, not before the pit stop, not, but not before the, uh, the, 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 he was actually ahead, I believe, of, of Strong after the second pit stop, but to, to, uh, Strong just made the move on track, but Kevin seems to now find that car later on in the stint once those tires get warmed up, and it's now right on the back of to fight again, or rather not to fight Strong. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough time to get this done, but let's actually give our leader his just desserts as he's about to get through here. Actually, what is going on there? But there is uh, Jeffrey Reitfeld as he's getting through lap traffic here. I believe this is... Is this the final lap here, John? I believe we're on? Uh, I think or? it's the second last lap, but why don't we ride okay. on board with Reitfeld and just take us through a lap in the in the perfect race of Jeffrey Reitfeld, just to kind of show... Uh, sorry, this is the final lap. It's 47 lap race, and you're now following on board with the leader. This is the pressure he's got to deal with. He's on his last lap. He's got a massive lead. He's driving past... There you go, past Jonathan Ockercliffe who gives him enough room. You know, he's thinking, thank you very much, Jonathan, for being safe. This, this is his final lap. He, he knows he doesn't have to travel around these corners anymore, and he's just got to literally cruise at home. So he's heading now through the second, second chicane, just keep it nice and under control. He's got one of the THR green cars ahead of him. I believe that's actually uh, Ravio. I think I think he's actually made it up to um, Ravio to lap him, unless he's lapping. It might be O'Hala. Uh, it might be O'Hala. Uh, no, I think we, I think O'Hala's in eleven. So I'm sure. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I am to be honest, but I, it, it must be Ravio because he's already lapped O'Hala by the looks of things. So um, anyway. Uh, we're not sure who that is, but we'll not have any arguments over it because he's heading down towards the hairpin now for the final time. He's just really got to take it nice and easy, and this is how his race has gone. This is what he's seen. He's he's seen this track 47 times through now. He will be absolutely sick of it, but I'm sure he could drive it blind. <laughs> so, and, and knowing the way he's going, still probably be fastest. Um, and that was Ravio, I believe he just lapped. So, um, I believe that, that's here goes Ravio. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, heading down the the. Uh, uh, what's the name of it again? Casino Street, Casino. there we go. <laughs> Heading down into the final chicane. And Jeffrey Rietveld for Precision Motorsports. He's their lone driver today, but that hasn't stopped him absolutely dominating the field. And Jeffrey Rietveld wins round six of the Virtual V8 Supercar Championship 2013 from Montreal. An absolutely astonishing drive. Well done from Jeffrey. We have Jasper Tauber who's going to finish second. Oh, great result for Tauber. Unfortunately, he's got the one guy ahead of him in the championship ahead of him in this race. But Tauber, very well done for THR Orange. Good point scoring for him and the team as we have Adrian Holm. Looks like he's going to hold on to his podium. It looks like he's got about a second and a half gap to Eric uh, uh, Eric to fight in behind. Uh, looks like it looks like uh, this lap trouble, lap traffic is not going to give him any trouble. As I believe that's one of the D, that's one of the DPG most where it's got it ahead of him. And here we have Adrian Holm takes a podium position. He's going to be very happy with that first podium position in 2013 for Mr. Adrian Holm. Well done to the great to, drive for the lazy man racing drive. Well done to him. Eric to fight takes fourth position. Both those drives are going to be very happy with their result. Here's Butcher just holding off Eunice Rabio for fifth position. Well done for Butcher coming up from Division Two has done very well today. Has seemed to really found his form in these V8 Supercars. Was almost terrible. Pretty much. Oh, who is oh, that? Prince, the that's no Prince. Prince. 
Brent! Oh no, Reverse. Can, you, can you get that car started? Start it? He does, he does, but he might lose positions, and I'm sorry for, for, for doubting you there, you were exactly correct with Tommy O'Hala, so I was completely wrong, but <laughs> Kevin Brent, I don't think he lost a position, and he's oh. going to cross the line and pick up a top eight, and he will be, obviously he'll be disappointed, but he'll be pretty much relieved that, you know, that happened when he's got a big enough lead over his teammate here, David Junt, who's going to cross the line to finish a very respectable ninth position, so that's another great result from him after his fantastic show in the virtual mini challenge at mid-Ohio, so David Young crosses the line in, in ninth position, and then all the rest of the cars were lapped down, so Tommy Oyatla picked up a tenth in his debut for THR, he will be, I'm sure he'll be delighted with that, even though he, he um, had, a, had an incident earlier on and had damage. Lee Palmer, you know, it has to be said, he was the hard charger of this event, getting up to 11th position by the end, very respectable drive from the Englishman. Carlos Ortiz comes across the line in 12th, so he's had a quiet race, but strong strong position in the end. Kevin Angwin uh, follows behind his um, team. Actually, where's Matty Orban? Orban, yeah. Uh, he... Orban, oh no, he's, oh, actually, sorry, he's, he's directly behind uh, Kevin Angwin, so he's obviously had an issue there, because he was running in 9th position. Oh, that's so, a shame. Um, yeah, real real problems for Matej Orban, finishing down in 14th. Darren Adams picks up 15th for core, so that was a damage limitation race from him. Unfortunately involved in an incident with the man who finished behind him, Lars Brugman, on the first lap. Neither of those guys had any, you know, it was, it, none, neither of that, those guys' fault. But um, unfortunately these things happened, but they still picked up some points. Tristan Clark comes across the line 17th for Optimum Sim Racing, ahead of Sebastian Rosemeyer, the final DPG car, in 18th. Rob Taplin. A, a, a good result from the independent in 19th. He'll be happy with that. He, you know, he's just be aiming to get to the end of the race, and he's done it in a top 20 position. Bruno Souso Ferreira also involved in a problem, had problems early on, but he um, still managed to finish, which is uh, all you really want when you've had a, a difficult start to the race. Kevin Enderman finishes an unlucky 21st ahead of Jonathan Ockerclint. Ethan Bass, he's be, he struggled all day and he seems to have had a problem at the end because he's five laps down, but he did get to the finish in 23rd position. And the retirements in that race, if I can remember off the top of my head, we had Matt Richards retire early on after a couple of incidents caused by overheating. Heinz Petzold also retired after um, Matt Richards crashed and Petzold got unfortunately dragged into it. And um, our final retirement was An Andy Johns, I believe. Uh, yeah, Jones, Andy Jones yeah. for 1451 one Motorsports. So, absolutely phenomenal race uh, from the guys. Unlucky to the non finishers and very, very well done to the impeccable Jeffrey Reitbeld. Yeah, I'm a tremendous job from Reitbeld. We'll have the drivers in momentarily for a, a quick interview after the event, but just a quick word from our sponsors and we'll be right back with uh, the interviews. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim Racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. All right, welcome back here. We're just uh, going to finish up the driver interviews here, the last thing, last order of business before we send you away here from Montreal, Canada. Uh, the first driver we're going to talk to here is obviously our race winner, Jeffrey Reefa. I mean, Jeffrey, tremendous drive today. You seem to have, uh, I don't know what it is, but you seem to be that much better than everyone else on these control tires. So, I mean, what do you really pin that to? Because once we go to these control tires, it seems like it's just your game and you dominate it. Yeah, I don't know what it is with the control control tires and me, you know, uh, they suit me very well. I changed my wheel settings like for Watkins Glen and yeah, since that moment I don't have any tire issues anymore. So I was quite surprised that I was faster at the end of the stint than uh, Jesper Tolborg, so. I mean, uh, obviously at Watkins Glen you, you also won, but you received a 10 point uh, penalty. So uh, what were your thoughts coming out today? Because obviously now your, your championship lead, instead of being 18 points, it was 8 points. So was there any added pressure to do well here today? Uh, there wasn't any added pressure, actually, because yesterday I started testing. And yeah, you know, 
Canada just suits me very well. The setup was out of the box quite good. Only changed a few things, and yeah, the setup just felt perfect. The, the yeah, the tire wear was perfect, so didn't really have any pressure on me. Just wanted to finish first and get ball, of course, to yeah, extend the lead in the championship. Now, uh, moving forward in in the championship, I mean, what what are your thoughts uh, about going back to these sprint tires? Are is, are there any concerns that you're not going to be able to dominate as well as you've been the last uh, two rounds over here in North America? Uh, well, since I changed my wheel settings, as I said before, I don't have any tire issues anymore. So on the sprint tires, my tire wear was yeah worse than on the control tires. So hopefully it's fixed now. But yeah, you never know. We'll see it next round. Well, well done, nonetheless, Jeff. I mean, tremendous drive, not only uh, today, but also at Watkins Glen. You swept the North American Series, uh, 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 part of the championship, so well done to you. Uh, now, I know, John, you wanted to have words with uh, our our, po our podium position driver, uh, Adrian Ohm. Yeah, definitely. So, um, Adrian, I've been I've been looking forward to speaking to you because it looked like you had a phenomenal race out there with Eric Tveit. But first of all, just talk us through your event as a whole. It was quite, quite a good race. The car wasn't too too good actually it was very twitchy at the end of the stint so i just try to conserve the tires early in the stints to try and have some at the end but it was it was a good race with some close battles and some overtaking yeah and of course the main overtaking it has to be said for the throughout the entire field came from you and eric to battle and also of course through the pit lane so just tell us a bit more about that you know what while you're having the battle with eric did you think you had the pace over him do you think you were really evenly matched you know what was your what was your situation at the time and what did you predict to happen from that i i i feel i had a pace in early in the stints but in the end my tires fell off too much and he he caught me pretty much in the end of the stint so and going into the hairpin ran wide there and i just thought all right i'm just gonna pit this lap and i i hoped that he was gonna stay out for another lap and <laughs> when i realized he wasn't i just had to st stand on the brakes and you know tr just try to hit that 40 case in the in the pit lane and from then on just i knew i had the shot early so i just went for it in the beginning and it worked out and from then on i was i was quite comfortable having him behind cuz i just focus on my on my race not doing any mistakes and i knew he wasn't going to get a get a good enough run from then on pretty much yeah definitely and this is of course your first podium of the season so um y i mean you've had a bit of an inconsistent season it must be said a couple of good results and also a couple of um unfortunate um incidents and stuff so um do you think you'll be able to continue this form do you reckon you know another podium or even a even a chance at victory and maybe one of the sprint races is a possibility for later this season i definitely hope so i mean the tracks coming up is and you know big i'm a big fan of those uh I didn't really like this North American tour, to be honest. I would like to have like Hidden Valley and such in there, but yeah, for sure, Sid Sydney Park was, would probably be my best shot. Have had good speed there throughout both my races there, so we'll see. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. So very well done to Adrian. Unfortunately, we can't talk to Jesper Tolberg, but I'm sure he'll he'll be happy with an element of disappointment because the man he needed to beat, <laughs> he couldn't today. So I believe now Danny's speaking to the other side of that battle, um, Eric Tveit, who finished a fantastic fourth. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Eric uh, really quick about uh, his race today. I mean, Eric, I tr you 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 were very sporty today, very very uh looking like you're actually going to take podium with uh going against mr adrian Holmes. so uh, t take us through that race from your end well um i had a quite interesting start to the race i lost that position now to butcher quite early in the race uh i decided to go for an early pit stop to try to get undercut on chris that is i got undercut on chris and got past him and tried to push my way up to home so late in that second stint, I caught up with him, and we were in a very nice battle. I managed to get past him um, when we were going into piss, as he said earlier. But on my cold tires, and with his setup, which were very good out of the corners, I just couldn't keep him behind me. I couldn't even get past. So I sat behind and hoped that my tire bear would actually beat someone for the first time in history. <laughs> and then when we were lapping some back markers around halfway around the circuit, I got a little bit too late on brakes and just locked up and I spun it. 
got around a three second gap up to home and just try to push all the car got until the end. Well, obviously, Adrian Holm, and I just wanted to ask you about this, being Ice Cold Racing's uh, team boss, uh, Adrian went to L Lazy Man Racing last round of Watkins Glen, beat everybody in Ice Cold Racing. Uh, now going into this round, was there any extra motivation to perhaps beat Adrian and, Adrian and show him that perhaps uh, maybe he made the wrong move and, go, uh, and leaving the team like that? Um, if I beat him, well, if I did beat him, I would have told him that. If he was a nice call, he would have gotten a setter, which handled the entire very much better. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, nice, nicely done to you, Eric. A tremendous result to get fourth place. Uh, now, uh, John, I know I, I, you, you're going to point this towards uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd like to speak to Chris Bull. Uh, I'll speak to you in a minute, uh, Junus, after a great race. But first of all, Chris Butcher. Um, Chris, you, of course, picked up a top five. You, 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 know, you told me before the race you hadn't done much practice, but it seemed like it didn't matter too much in the end. You, you did have the car well balanced, as you were saying. Yeah, um, I've always run quite well at, uh, at Montreal. Um, I think I got my first rear-wheel drive win here. And uh, yeah, in, initially I was, um, I was struggling a little bit, but... Um, I don't really know what it was, but after qualifying, I put a good lap in, and then uh, I just seemed to be a bit closer to the pace, to be honest with you. Um, I could have been in the fight for the podium, but I made a couple of mistakes, and, uh, and it, uh, you know, a mistake with his strategy as well. But um, it's lessons for uh, lessons for the next race. Yeah, and obviously we saw um, Eunice coming up <laughs> thick and fast behind you towards the end of that race after his um, pit lane infringement earlier on. So, you know, just heading towards the end of the race, did you think did you think he was going to get you or were you pretty comfortable you had a big enough gap? Well, to start off with, I thought I had a big enough gap because I knew that he needed to catch me at a second a lap and I didn't think he was going to do it. And to start off with, um, he wasn't. But then uh, all of a sudden, he, his pace just seemed to... I don't know whether his pace picked up or mine dropped off, I'm not sure, but... Um, he started catching me really quickly, and uh, I started to get a little bit worried. Um, and then, of course, we had that issue with the with the back markers uh, squabbling amongst themselves, and it was a bit difficult to get by them. And then he was right on my tail. Um, and then the last couple of laps, it was obviously uh, Ethan stuck in the middle of the track at the chicane, and I think that's just what allowed me to stay ahead. I think otherwise, uh, Eunice would have been by. Yeah, and definitely a good result from yourself. But speaking of Eunice, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Of course, you, you had the third place. It looked like, um, well, actually, you know, going even further back, first of all, massive congratulations for a fantastic qualifying lap. And, you um, <coughs> you know, Jeffrey literally got over the line with a second to go to just steal it from you. Um, but you seemed to struggle a little bit with the tyres at the start. Um, but then, of course, talk us through the main, the main point in your race, which was, of course, the, the pit lane. Uh, yeah, well, that was, that was one of my luckiest lap ever at school, so <laughs> I'm really happy, happy about it. And well, about the race, uh, Jeffrey did a, a hell of a job to, to the, um, and I didn't have a cho uh, choice to uh, keep behind him. But yeah, about the uh, 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 drive through. I was just too uh, overexcited, and <laughs> because my uh, first pit stop was uh, quite uh, bad, uh, and I man uh, wanted to make a little better second stop, but yeah. Yeah, obviously it didn't work out quite too well in the end, but you did have a great result in six. But, you know, it was just funny on the broadcast because as you were, you know, exiting the pit lane, we were just talking about the fact that, you know, some drivers are just too eager to get on the gas and get a pit lane speeding penalty, not having a clue that you would suffer the same thing. So I'm sorry, I probably cursed that for you. So you can blame me uh, entirely for that one. <laughs> uh, just okay. one final question. What's what's your opinion on the on the circuit, the track? Uh, there was a uh, loss of creep. Good circuit, but a uh, loss of creep. Yeah, of course, with a slippery surface um, at Montreal, which is actually quite a feature and also a bumpy, bumpy circuit. So um, that does make a lot of sense. So, yeah, very well done today. Uh, Eunice, unlucky you didn't get on the podium in the end, but uh, still a, a strong top six result. So well done. And I believe now uh, Danny is going to speak to THR debutant Tommy O'Hara. Yeah, Tom, just have, wanted to have a quick word with you, Tom. Uh, I, obviously, you, I, I John said you just switched over to THR. A very strong result here today. I believe you finished 10th, so uh, how how'd your race go, I mean, from your end of things? Well, it could have been better because I was standing still like 25 seconds in the pits because I had to make repairs. 
as I lost the car in first stint, but otherwise the race was pretty good for the for first race with the THR. Um, uh, you had a bit of an issue there. I believe you got uh, your front clip taken off. Uh, you had to pit a little earlier. So, I mean, how was it to fight back through the field? I think you dropped a 13th at one point uh, uh, the, 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 to, to go back through the field. How, 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 how did that go? Well, after repairs, the car was back to normal, I think. And I was able to do good laps and got the places when the other people got, get to it go to the pits and at the last lap I think Matt Hay went to the pits to get fuel and so I got the tent place from him there but uh, it was good good result for me. Well, very well done, Tommy. Obviously, to just go over to THR and get a top 10, such a strong league. Well done. And uh, that will actually wrap up our driver interviews. Uh, the, the, the race today was obviously a Jeffrey Reitfeld dominated affair, but we had a fair bit of action within the top 10. Obviously, home to Vite being the, 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 the major bit of that. Uh, then, uh, unfortunately, Eunice Ravio then dropped back to 8th place after his drive through penalty. But regardless, a solid result from the two championship leading uh, guys in Reitfeld felt and Talbert. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to talk to Talbert, not only this round, but uh, a few for a few rounds. So hopefully maybe the Iceman will join us in the booth one of these days. But uh, uh, just to update our viewers on our next events, we have uh, the uh, uh, Thomas Cole, Cole Cleo series resuming in about a week, a week and a half time at Croft. And uh, uh, John, I know you actually compete in that series for Precision Motorsports. So talk a bit about what we can expect uh, in, in about a week and a half. Well, um, if anyone tuned into the broadcast on Wednesday, we saw quite a few fireworks between um, THR and Precision. There was a fantastic battle going on for uh, second place it was after Alexander Lauritsen walked away with a win. And there was a bit of con controversy surrounding that. It was um, Some drivers viewed it as over-aggressive. But, of course, um, the Stewarts will decide all. And it just sets us up for an incredibly exciting end to the season. Um, but, unfortunately, it's another four weeks away, or uh, just under four weeks until we see that. And um, but definitely, definitely looking forward to it, and because of course it is the debut, as you can see in the picture, of the 2013 Clio mod, um, which is brand new to the series, and hopefully will spice things up. The 2008 mod um, was absolutely fantastic, uh, and maybe it wasn't all drivers' favourite cars to drive, but I certainly enjoyed it. Um, so you know, and hopefully the 2013 car will will be even better, and we'll see more fantastic Clio action, uh, thanks to Tom Monzo Cole and Team Hard. So, um, yeah, battle between Precision and THR, I'm sure, will resume uh, in the next round at Croft. But um, just just the final uh, word before I hand you back over to Danny to round us off. Um, yeah, just just um, well done on a fantastic race to all the drivers. Um, brilliant to watch and an absolute pleasure to commentate on because uh, it's my uh, the first uh, commentary I've done for Touring Pro Series outside of the Virtual Mini Challenge, and it was an absolute honour. It was a um, fantastic event, uh, and I'm, I hope you enjoyed it more than uh, you enjoy the Formula 1. We're, we're putting on a better show here at Montreal than, <laughs> than Formula 1 can manage. But, um, yeah, I'd just like to thank all of you viewers uh, for tuning in today to what has been a fantastic event. Uh, as usual uh, in the Touring Pro Series and definitely make sure you tune in in two weeks time for the next round um, but I'll, I'll hand you over to Danny to round us off so um, thank you very much from me Yep, in only a few weeks time we're going to go to Oran Park, a very storied track within the Touring Pro Series and virtual V8 supercars. Uh, unfortunately the track is no longer in use in real life but hey, we, at least that's why we have uh, virtual sim racing so we can still see, see some of the legendary tracks Get some good racing action on there. But uh, it's been a pleasure to commentate on this uh, event here today uh, here at Montreal. This will obviously conclude our North American leg of the championship. Now we're going to go back to the good old tried and true Aussie uh, tracks to finish off this championship. So uh, from John Monroe and Danny Asbury, it's been a pleasure. Until uh, next time.